So what were they eating? Well, they were competing to win a python, and to do so, they had to eat the most live cockroaches out of everyone else. <laughs> One man named But it is guys, it's your boy Blastmas HD And you guys have sent me a video of what you tell me is more people dying ceaselessly and foolishly You guys want to watch the original video? The link's in the description down below, it is by World List Let's do this Number 8 Whether it's beards, mustaches, goatees, or the groovy beloved sideburns People have been rocking facial hair for thousands of years Sometimes there's the occasional problem that can come from it, like getting food stuck in your stash or it's starting to get itchy. But it's usually never anything too serious. Sadly though, one man had his own beard turn against him. Hans Steininger was a pretty big deal during his time. In the 16th century, he was the mayor of his town, Braunau am Inn, located near Austria and Germany. Although the kind of man he was or how he served as a public leader has been forgotten, he still became a bit of a legend to the locals after his death. Hans was remembered for having a beard nearly 5 feet, 1.5 meters long. Damn. That's longer than some people are tall. Unfortunately, despite being such an impressive man, his death was anything but. On September 28, 1567, a fire broke out in the town, sending everyone into chaos. Usually worn tied up and out of the way, Hans's beard was loose, left flowing in the wind as he ran in fear. But mm -hmm. while he was trying to escape, he accidentally stepped on the beard, mm -hmm. causing him to trip and fall down his stairs. In this horrible turn of events, he managed to break his neck during Damn. the fall. But here's an interesting fact. The town of Braunau am Inn kept the mayor's beard. It's been preserved what? and on display for nearly 450 years since that fateful day. What? It's quite the artifact. So if you ever find yourself between Austria and Germany and you happen to visit All these lines make it look like all this is real close together but I know indeed it's a very long walk to Poland. I refuse to do it unless Lil Yachty drives me and he plays that song. To this town, go see one of the most impressive beards in history. Why would I Number want to seven, see a beard? Inventive Death. The Eiffel Tower has been a monumental and distinguishing landmark of Paris for hundreds of years. But despite being one of the most popular tourist destinations in the City of Love, did you know over 300 people have died at the tower? Damn! This includes the self-proclaimed inventor Franz oh, Reichelt. It's Birdman! The tragic event was actually caught on film in 1912 in a video that is oh, now stored flying. in the British Path Archive. Oh! It all started when Franz became a- Oh look, he's flying! <laughs> Pew -pie. Just doesn't get back up. That's good old-fashioned clean family comedy right there inspired by parachutes. As the owner of a dressmaking shop in the city, he soon took his inspiration and turned it into an obsession. He wanted to create an easy wearable option for the life-saving parachute. But sadly, this would turn out to be his final ambition. Since one had been accomplished before in history as far back as Leonardo da Vinci's time, Franz thought his objective would be doable. He sought to improve the historic design through his own ideas, one of which where he changed the original canopy type design and instead, opted for a piece of fabric that was intended to catch wind similar to a sail in order to ease into a landing. In his early days of designing the chute, his creations weighed an astounding 154 pounds, 70 kilograms, which what? was anything but practical for the average wearer. What the fuck? But later on, through small improvements, he got the weight down to 55 pounds, 25 kilograms, an astounding difference. No. In the testing stages, Franz used multiple dummies, but they all failed. And eventually, he tested it himself and got a broken leg in return. Even with these failed test runs, though, he refused to change his design. Franz full-heartedly believed that the only problem was the height at which he was testing. So he tried something a little higher, the Eiffel Tower. At first, his requests to attempt the jump were adamantly denied until he said it would only be a dummy. But that was a lie. Despite the pleas from his close friends to not jump, Franz believed in his invention. While climbing the stairs to the top, he told the crowd that had gathered below, See you soon! And at the top of the tower, he waited for almost a minute before finally jumping. Sadly, Dumbass. his parachute never fully opened, and Franz hit the ground at full force, killing him instantly. If there's anything to learn here, it'd be to triple check inventions and perhaps do a few more test runs before putting an actual person at risk. Number 6. Bank Dumbass. Robbing A lot of times, bank robbing in television and movies is portrayed as a high-risk and well-thought-out heist. But sometimes, things aren't always what they look like on TV. Most of the time, <coughs> robbing a bank doesn't go well, and the thieves end up behind bars. But for Brian Douglas Wells, things turned out even worse. 
On an August afternoon in 2003, the middle-aged pizza delivery driver walked into a Pennsylvania bank with a frightening note. It told the teller to get a bag ready as quickly as possible with a quarter million dollars in cash. I drag my balls across the front of this clear glass window and I ain't washed in a month. I'm not a killer, but don't you push me. To make matters worse, Brian pointed to a device on his neck with a 15-minute timer. Oh. It was a bomb. Oh. Frightened, the teller did everything she could but was unable to open the bank's vault. All she could gather was $8,702. Brian took the bag and the teller called authorities after he left. They found him 15 minutes later around the corner. He pleaded with the cops, saying that some strange men had put the device around him, forcing him to go inside the bank. He kept saying it was going to blow, but they didn't buy it. A bomb squad did appear at the scene, but they weren't able to stop the explosion. Brian died as the blast went off, ripping a hole in his chest. Despite Brian saying he was coerced into robbing the bank, some believe that he was in on the crime the entire time, but the plan just backfired. Others say his accomplices just let the bomb go off to take care of a loose end. Eventually, another arrest was made when a drug dealer, Kenneth Barnes, admitted to helping in the robbery. Even with this conviction, not everyone is convinced the truth was revealed. But if it turns out Brian was part of the mastermind plan, it's a pretty dumb way to die. So what do you think? Did Brian have any part in- Who tries to hold a bank hostage by strapping a bomb to themselves? Come on! This really is dumbest ways to die. Number five, Lava Lamp. Remember being a kid and going to the arcade? You'd try your absolute hardest to earn as many tickets as possible to get the coolest prizes. And almost always, one of those prizes was a lava lamp. Always. As a kid, it seemed like the coolest thing imaginable and everyone wanted one. I love a lava lamp. Well, as an adult, you're free to just buy one whenever you want. And that's exactly what a man from Washington did. You'd think as a 24-year-old grown-up, Philip Quinn would have had some common sense, right? Well, wrong. In fact, he for some reason thought it was a good idea to put his lava lamp on the stove while it was on. What's the worst that could happen? Maybe the stuff inside the lamp started to boil, or it just melted. Nope. At the extreme temperature it reached, the glass got so hot that the pressure built up, causing the whole thing to explode. Quinn was standing close by and a sharp piece of glass blew into his heart during the blast. Damn. You'd never think something like this could happen, but it did. His parents found his body later on. Philip died all alone in his trailer home, and the only reason they came to check on him was because his girlfriend called them worried after not hearing from him for a while. After his body was examined, they determined that the shard didn't kill Philip instantly. He was able to make his way into his room before dying of blood loss. Surprisingly, he wasn't intoxicated or under the influence of any drug. He just wanted to see what would happen to the lava lamp. Was just a dumbass. So to everyone watching, learn from Philip's mistake. And next time you want to try something questionable, just Google it first. Number four, German Shepherd. Almost everyone loves dogs. They're cute, cuddly, and loyal, and make the perfect pets. But some people like these animals way too much. Some poor dogs are abused by people seeking out ways to satisfy their own sick form of self-pleasure. One of these abusers was a woman from Ireland that likely got karmic justice for her absurd actions. A man named Sean McDonald met the unnamed woman online after she'd reached out to him to have sexual intercourse with his dog. She traveled all the way from her home to Britain in order to do the deed and have Sean film the entire encounter to post on some pretty disturbing pornographic websites. What? But something went wrong after she was done. Apparently, the 43-year-old lady had an allergic reaction to something in the dog's sperm. When her death went public and Sean's participation in the ordeal came to light, he lost his day job and his family broke off all contact. And let's be honest, this is a terrible thing to do to an animal. He was sent to court for the whole ordeal, and the judge in charge of his case was so shocked by his actions that he put Sean on a public sex offenders list and made him go to court-ordered counseling sessions. That's it? Number three. That's it? He needs to have his, his, his whole genitalia repossessed. He is not of proper intelligence level to be operating his own ding-dong. They need to take it, put it on the shelf somewhere. He shouldn't be using it. Good Lord, man. Is it bad that I want to see what the female look like, though? <laughs> Three, cockroach. Food competitions and cooking shows are insanely popular. Whether you're just watching the event or participating yourself, they're usually safe environments to just relax and have a little fun. Challenges can include all kinds of food, from hot dogs to pastries to insanely spicy foods and more. One of these contests took place in Deerfield Beach, Florida. The competition was being held at a local drugstore, and there were about 30 contestants in the running. So what were they eating? 
Well, they were competing to win a python, and to do so, they had to eat the most live cockroaches out of everyone else. <coughs> one man named Edward Archibald was set on winning the snake oh. for one of his friends, so he took on the oh. challenge, thinking it would be harmless oh. fun. But after shoving dozens oh. and dozens of crawling insects oh. into his mouth, Edward oh. began to choke. Eventually, he died due to asphyxiation and the amount of cockroaches in his body. The insect parts had blocked the oxygen from being able to enter his lungs. The owner of the pet shop and everyone who witnessed Edward's death were shocked and horrified. Even though he died, Edward did sign a disclaimer before participating in the competition, so no blame fell on the shop. It is definitely one of the dumbest yet tragic ways to die that we've ever heard of. Number 2. Crashing Cows Imagine going to sleep just like any other night, only this time you never wake up. For many, that sounds like the ideal and most peaceful way to die. But what if it wasn't so peaceful? A man named João Maria de Souza was sleeping one night at his home in Brazil when out of nowhere a cow fell through his bedroom roof and crushed him. He didn't die instantly, but he did eventually bleed out due to the incident. The 3,000-pound, 1,360-kilogram cow fell from 8 feet 2.4 meters high onto Zhao. Oh, yeah. Apparently, the animal had recently escaped from a farm that was close by. Zhao's house was right against a hill, so that the cow must have gotten onto his roof somehow. Zhao's wife quickly took him to the hospital to try and fix him up, but he bled out from the cow-related injuries. His family was devastated. Zhao was a loving husband, brother, and son, and no one could have predicted something like this. The owner of the cow is yet to be discovered, but it's very possible that, if caught, he could go to court because of the death his cow caused. Just always remember to tell the people in your life you love them, because before you know it, they might be hit by a cow falling from the sky. <laughs> and it does make you wonder, what happened to the cow after this incident? Number 1. Gun Safety There are many gun owners in the United States of America, and most of them that acquire weapons legally are required to attend mandatory safety classes in order to get a permit to allow them to have a gun in the first place. An older man named Glenn Seymour went through all of these steps as a reasonable gun owner should, but while attending one of the classes, something happened. He got a little cocky and decided to try out a technique that he hadn't practiced before, and it went very, very wrong. The movie attempted was a skill that's only taught in high-level courses, but Glenn was just at an average concealed carry class in Missouri. Did you try to curve a bullet like in Wanted? He should not have been testing out his ability here, but it's too late now. During the instruction, Glenn accidentally shot himself in the chest and he died almost instantly. Witnesses and his instructor at the time said it was an awful accident that should never have happened. The gun Glenn was using was a 9mm semi-automatic handgun and Ooh. he'd taken the safety off. One of the first things they teach you when handling a weapon like this is to never put your finger on the trigger unless you intend to fire. But sadly, it seems that Glenn didn't remember this rule. Number 10. Attack of the Rescue Dog Alexandra Prakowska was once a model for L'Oreal. The Polish national also worked as an actress when she couldn't find work. You might say she had the perfect face for TV. Unfortunately for her, that perfect face was ruined after she nearly lost her left eyeball after rescuing a seemingly innocent dog. In fact, she was blamed by the shelter for the attack, with them saying that she brought it upon herself by being a lazy dog owner. The incident went down in Warsaw when Alexandra was rushed to the hospital with injuries to her face. Her new dog, named Logan, apparently went absolutely berserk after several months of living with her. According to the local reports, Logan had a troubled past and suffered from cancer. He was also known for occasionally being aggressive and has once even attacked Alexandra's neighbor's daughter. Oh, so the dog was like a recovering drug addict or something? Nigga. Yeah, and the dog also bit the previous owner's neighbor's wife. Basically, the dog was a loose cannon, but Alexandra was dedicated to her pet. Well, Dumbass. she was dedicated to it right up until the moment when Logan mutilated her so badly that her left eye nearly fell out. She's now probably never going to model again. Her face has been horribly scarred, and she has since taken Logan back to the shelter. She blames them for misinformation, giving away the dog to an unwitting owner when it was clearly dangerous. Number 9. Bite of the Serpent A man from Limburg in the Netherlands was recently recovering in the hospital after spending 10 long days in a medically induced coma. The reason doctors put him in a coma is because he had gotten bit by a cobra that he was keeping in his cellar for fun. Maybe Stop. karma was teaching him a lesson? The man has not been named for privacy reasons. He's probably embarrassed, but according to the Brussels Times, he had several different exotic snakes kept inside his house. However, the cobra was definitely the most dangerous. The man knew it was dangerous too, 
because he had isolated it from the other snakes in his cellar. Amazingly, the pet owner tried to defend his snake and keep it away from wildlife officials. He told the authorities that he had been bitten by a random snake and that he didn't know where it had come from. Then it came out, months after the incident, that it was actually his pet. Authorities have since gone to his house to pick up all the exotic snakes he was keeping illegally, including the cobra and a pair of rattlesnakes from Texas. According to the wildlife workers, they weren't even kept in good cages. They were in plexiglass containers with sliding doors that the snakes were able to open by themselves. And after being busted, the man admitted that one of his rattlesnakes had bitten him before as well. He had already lost his finger to one of his exotic snakes, but he just couldn't give them up. He has since made a full recovery from the cobra attack. But with people like this, he's probably just going to find another cobra somewhere and put that one in his cellar. Number 8. Hungry Lions At the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, a zookeeper forgot that she had let the lions out. This is one thing you definitely don't want to ever forget while working at a zoo. How you forget that you left lions out? Come on, lady! When she walked into their yard to fill up their giant water dish, she forgot that they were prowling around the enclosure. Within just seconds of walking into the outdoor lion exhibit, the animal head, spotted man. her. At 60 years old, Nancy yeah. DeFiesta wasn't in the best shape for running yeah. away. The lions jumped, and she was helpless. To be quite honest, she is lucky that she survived at all. According to the Chicago Tribune, she suffered 64 puncture wounds to her head Damn. and body before zoo employees managed to get her out. The incident was investigated by the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The investigation found that during the first two hours of the morning, zoo workers can sometimes make errors. This is the time of day when animals need to be fed and exhibits need to be cleaned. In this case, a single mistake of forgetting that the lions were already in the enclosure caused Nancy to almost be killed. She has since recovered, though she will bear the scars of her encounter for the rest of her life. She declined to give any comments to the media, and we don't know if she'll ever go back to working with the huge cats. Number 7. The Deadliest Lizards Ronald Huff died in 2002. The story of Ronald and his lizards is one of the most terrifying examples of what can happen when pets go wrong. The police were mortified when they walked through Ronald's front door to discover he had been eaten alive by his collection of Nile monitor lizards. In fact, when the police showed up, the seven reptiles were in the process of feasting on his corpse. At 42 years old, Ronald became dinner for his very own flesh-eating friends. What the fuck? For those who didn't know, monitor lizards are basically a mix between a crocodile, a dinosaur, and a Komodo dragon. These venomous creatures typically live in Africa, but have been popular household pets in the past few decades. According to what the former Newcastle County Sheriff told Animal Planet, when they knocked on Ronald's door, they could hear shuffling from inside. They knew someone was in there, but nobody would answer. They broke down the door, and there was Ronald. One of the lizards looked up, licked its bloody lips, and then kept eating. But this case was never technically solved. Nobody knows if it was the seven lizards that ganged up and killed Ronald, or if he died from natural causes and then was simply devoured. Since he had allowed his pet lizards to roam freely around the house, it was impossible to say just what exactly happened. Number what in the world of white people? Black people ain't doing that shit. Damn that. Number six, emotional alligator. A man named Joey Henry from Pennsylvania has a rather unusual emotional support animal. Most people have dogs for emotional support pets, while the occasional lonely person may have a cat or a rabbit. But not Joey, who recently registered his four-year-old alligator to be his emotional support friend. The alligator's name is Wally. He's about five feet long. He weighs around 60 pounds, and he goes everywhere that Joey goes. No. This includes shopping at Walmart and no. watching baseball games. Uh -uh. I'm happy to say that as of right now, Wally has not actually turned on Joey, but keep in mind that it's probably going to happen at just about any time. Everyone knows alligators are wild animals and not to be trusted. Alligators are more unpredictable than big cats, bears, or any other bizarre animal that someone keeps in their home. And speaking of keeping animals in their home, Joey keeps Wally inside a plastic indoor pond. And if you're wondering where you even get an emotional support alligator, Joey simply took Wally from outside when he found him wandering around at 14 months old. Wally actually became the very first alligator in America to earn the title of emotional support animal, and he's apparently helping Joey to deal with his depression. What do you think? Is it just a matter of time before Wally snaps on his owner and bites one of his legs off? Or do you think having a literal alligator living in his house is perfectly sane and not dangerous at all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. Number 5.
He gonna be on World Star Hip Hop within three months. Bad news bear. Kellyanne Waltz has a captive black bear that she keeps with her husband. This beastly bear was 350 pounds living at Kelly's home. No. She and her husband kept it in a cage, but it was still thought as a member of the family. Kelly's husband happened to be an exotic pet dealer operating in Pennsylvania with an expired license. They were absolutely not supposed to have exotic animals on their property, but this didn't stop them from having a lion, a jaguar, a tiger, two servals, a leopard, and the black bear. Since they were living in the Poconos Mountains, nobody really cared what they were doing. At least, not until Kelly tried to clean the black bear's cage and ended up being mauled to death. When you hear the details of how Kelly was cleaning the cage, it will come as no surprise that she was killed. She opened the door to the cage, threw a shovel full of dog food to one side of it, then used the small window of opportunity to clean the opposite side while the bear ate the dog food. This time, the bear was not so easily distracted. When Kelly turned her back, the bear abandoned the dog food and charged. She screamed in horror, but that only made the bear angrier. By the time a neighbor showed up with a gun and shot the wild animal to death, Kelly was already dead. Number 4. Killed by Big Bird In Florida, a man was keeping a cassowary on his property. For those who don't know what a cassowary is, it's basically like a mixture between a flamingo and a dinosaur. It is a huge, flightless bird native only to Australia and Papua New Guinea. These ridiculously massive birds can grow to be around 6 feet tall and 130 pounds. No. Their bodies are covered in huge black feathers. They have bright blue heads and they have claws so big and so sharp they can easily eviscerate a human being. And that's exactly what happened in Gainesville when the victim was killed by his pet cassowary. According to the deputy chief on the case, Jeff Taylor, the victim was hanging out with the bird when he fell over. Nobody knows how he fell, if it was his own fault, or if the bird somehow tricked him. But when he hit the ground, the bird saw its opportunity and attacked. It used its huge claws to mangle the poor man, literally tearing him to shreds. The San Diego Zoo says that cassowaries are the most dangerous birds in the world, able to run 31 miles an hour, and able to slice open even the most dangerous predators with just one kick. Number 3. The Farmer's Pigs Mr. Shustoff was in his 70s when he went missing. It was New Year's Eve and his family was very worried. They beseeched the local authorities for help, but it wouldn't be until January 8th, over a week after the victim went missing, that police discovered what happened to him. To get a better idea of how things went very wrong for Mr. Shustoff, keep in mind that he was a pig farmer. He lived in a small Polish village where he took care of two adult pigs and 12 piglets. These animals were free-range, allowed to roam around in the yard and even around the farmer's house by themselves. His neighbors told the police that the pigs were gigantic and that they ran wild across his property. Sadly for the pig farmer, he happened to be outside on New Year's Eve when he suffered a sudden heart attack. He fell down, probably died in the muck, and his corpse was there for his pigs to eat. His loyal, friendly pigs suddenly weren't so loyal anymore. On January 8th, the police found the victim, mostly eaten by his pigs, with only a few scraps of him left, including some pieces of skull and bone. Other than that, the pigs had eaten every last part of him. Number 2. Attack of the Pit Bull In New Jersey, a couple were left with horrible injuries after being attacked inside their very own home by the family pit bull. According to officers with the South Brunswick Police, emergency medical workers were called to the property in the middle of the afternoon at which point they discovered a man and woman, both in their 60s, with serious lacerations on their limbs. The victims informed the police that the pit bull randomly attacked the man while he was minding his own business in his bedroom. The woman ran into the room to see what was happening, and that was when the dog turned on her. Luckily, there happened to be another resident in the house, a guy in his 30s. The younger man was able to wrestle the dog off the elderly people. If it hadn't been for him, the dog very well may have ripped them both to pieces. Unfortunately, we can never predict an animal's behavior. Something must have made the dog snap. The dog was handed over to South Brunswick Animal Control, but they have not given any additional info on why the attack happened. We don't know if the dog had been feral or if its owners were simply negligent. According to the National Pitbull Victim Awareness Organization, sadly, there is a human death by pitbull every 13 days. Damn! And number one, the reptile keeper. The zookeeper who almost died after being attacked by her very own pet reptile has defended the beast by saying he was just having a bad day. The animal handler just about lost her hand after the alligator chomped down on her arm during a children's party. 
Lindsay Bull was feeding Darth Gator, her beloved 11-year-old monster, in front of a group of children when it grabbed her by the wrist and then dragged her backwards into his tank. It likely would have eaten her if not for one of the guests at the children's party jumping into the water and prying its jaws open. But even after this terrifying brush with death and in front of an audience of horrified children no less, Lindsay is defending her alligator with everything she has. She recently told Desert News, after being released from the hospital, that she is going to keep him and he is going to have no consequences for what happened. She says he was just doing what animals do, and while that might be right, she was left with a damaged tendon and multiple fractures. She crazy. I'd have made a belt skin coat out of his little ass. I'd have had a brand new pair of now later Gator J's out this month. Number 10. Cab Driver Femicide Former cab driver Ricardo Alexis Diaz was recently sentenced to 50 years in prison for one of the most brutal incidents of taxis gone wrong. This sick taxi driver is responsible for murdering a young student in Mexico. Mara Fernanda Castilla Miranda went missing in September of 2017 after taking a cab to the outskirts of Puebla near Mexico City. According to the investigators, Ricardo, who was only 24 years old at the time, kidnapped Mara instead of bringing her to her destination. He took the girl against her will to a hotel, where he then strangled her to death. After the brutal murder, he dumped her body in a ditch, where it was found several days later. It's unclear what the motive behind the killing was. Ricardo had been a taxi driver for a while and could have killed any number of people, but he just seems to have snapped when Mara got into his cab. The dead girl's mother told local news that she was satisfied with the sentence of 50 years, though she would have preferred 60 years. She also said that although Ricardo is being punished by the authorities, a divine punishment will come from him in time. Number 9. An Opportunistic Murder After a couple forgot their keys in a cab, their worst nightmare came to life. It was a Saturday morning in Brazil when Marcelo Sala was contacted to give the couple a ride to Florencio Varela. It was a seven-hour drive, which passed completely normal without any incident. However, the couple asked that the driver wait for them outside. When the couple got out of the car, Marcelo noticed that they had left their keys and a fanny pack in the back seat. He decided it was a great opportunity to take their keys, drive back to their house, and rob them blind. So, Marcelo did just that. He took off without them, drove back to their house, and then used the keys to get inside. Marcelo thought nobody would be home. However, the daughter of his passengers was in the house. At just 23 years old, Eileen Estefanda Arredondo got into a fight with the old man when he used her parents' keys to get inside. The fight turned violent, with Marcelo beating the poor girl until she was completely disfigured. According to official sources, he beat her so badly that she died right there on the floor of her very own house. And here's where things got really dramatic. As Marcelo tried to leave, the neighbors caught him and made a civilian arrest. They held him until the police arrived, at which point the police took him away. We don't know what's become of Marcelo the murderer, but he's almost certainly never going to see the light of day again for what he did. I'm surprised they didn't kill him. I would have. <laughs> Self-defense. An eye for an eye, baby. Number 8. North Irish Drug Smuggler During the pandemic, a taxi driver from Northern Ireland wanted to make a bit of easy money, so he decided to get into a business of smuggling drugs. He was recently busted along with his two accomplices in an operation that consisted in smuggling over $500,000 worth of cannabis between the capital of Belfast and Dungannon. Damien Gildernew was the brains behind the operation, busted by police when they stopped his taxi in an underground parking lot and found over 10 kilos of cannabis in the trunk. When the police searched the apartment upstairs, they found another 16 kilos of cannabis in a cupboard in his bedroom. The weed was vacuum sealed in plastic bags, ready for distribution. In total, that's almost 60 pounds of pot. The arrest came following a long investigation in which the police watched surveillance footage outside the apartment where Gildernew was busted. The police saw that he was going to and from the apartment at random times, suggesting he was moving drugs. As it turns out, he was a regular courier hauling weed between one city and another, but he was only getting paid around $200 each journey. The money from the pot didn't actually go to him, he was simply getting paid to move it. It wasn't a very lucrative operation and proved to be significantly more trouble than it was worth. Number 7. Taxi Battering Ram In Hong Kong, a taxi was used like a battering ram when it crashed into a pedestrian island, killing one and injuring almost ten. The crash was an accident. The taxi driver never actually intended to kill anyone. Instead, he was just old and driving dangerously. According to the local Hong Kong police, 
The driver was 63 years old at the time and had since been arrested for dangerous driving. The incident occurred on Taipo Road when he seemingly lost control of his cab and smashed into the pedestrian island where people were waiting to cross the street. After the impact, a pregnant woman was left trapped underneath his ruined taxi. Luckily, some good Samaritans rushed into the street and worked together to lift the taxi off the pregnant woman, saving her from certain death. Among the victims rushed to the hospital was an elderly woman and a four-year-old boy. Another woman was unconscious and had to be carried to the nearest hospital, while another three victims were rushed to the hospital, but not in serious condition. As for the person who died following the brutal crash, they have yet to be identified by the authorities. So far as we know, the person died immediately after getting run over by the rogue taxi. Number 6. Taxi Killer Christopher Hollowell is a maniac murderer who used to drive a cab in York, England. He was actually in jail, serving a life sentence for killing Sean O'Callaghan back in 2011, when he was charged with yet another murder from 2003 of Becky Godden. But the real horror story is that since then, Christopher has confessed to even more mysterious killings that would make him one of the worst serial killers in English history. But to understand the taxi killer a bit better, let's back up to before he was arrested. At 52 years old, Christopher was living with his partner and his three daughters. Fellow taxi driver Neil Barnett described Christopher as a really nice guy and a totally normal person. But what his friends, co-workers, and family didn't know was that Christopher had a dark side. He was secretly using prostitutes in his spare time. He was getting rough and weird, with some of them being forced to call for help. His nightly activities came to a grinding halt when he was directly connected to the murder of Sean O'Callaghan. But he has also been linked to the disappearance of a girl named Claudia Lawrence. Even more disturbing is that police found a secret trophy trunk filled with women's clothing, about 60 articles in total. Two of the items were identified as one belonging to Sean and the other to Becky Godden. The other 58 are still unknown, suggesting Christopher may have killed upwards of 60 women throughout his entire life. Hey. Number 5. Road Rage Taxi driver Adib Ibrahim used his vehicle as a weapon to kill a man named Ralph Bizanet. It was a terrifying case of road rage gone wrong and the driver has since been sentenced to spend four years in prison. How it all started is, quite frankly, a little shocking. The taxi driver had gotten into an unfortunate interaction with Ralph right before the murder. Ralph was riding his longboard when the cab drove a little too close to him. Upset, Ralph yelled at the taxi driver and hit his vehicle with his hand. It wasn't the end of the world, just a light slap against the cab. But the driver became so furious that he swerved his cab into Ralph's path. He lost his temper and tried to run the guy down. During court proceedings, it was found that the driver did indeed use his vehicle as a weapon with the intent of hurting Ralph, not just scaring him. The cab hit the long border. He was crushed, his skull cracked like an egg, and he died instantly. Superior Court Justice Robert Clark said the only merciful aspect of the incident is that Ralph had a swift death, though the kid's final moments may have been horrific. Number 4. Crack Dealing Taxi Driver a taxi driver has been busted selling crack cocaine to fake passengers. The cabbie drug dealer named Reese Hearn was jailed for three years. He got caught after an unmarked police car got suspicious of his movements. The officer had witnessed Reese cab pull up to a bus stop, pick up a lady, drive about 300 yards, then stop and let her out. Thinking it was a bit weird, the officer followed the taxi and pulled him over. Inside the cab, the cop found a stash of about $265 in cash, a phone with messages relating to drug dealing, and 10 pre-packaged bundles of 65% pure crack. There was also a Ziploc bag with 77% pure cocaine. Once Reese knew he was busted, he told officers that he was just trying to make a living. But what a measly living it was. Reese admitted that he only made about $600 in a week, keeping about $200 for himself and giving the rest to his supplier. Number 3. Killed by Umbrella Something terrifying happened in Brooklyn involving a taxi driver and an umbrella. Eyewitnesses told police that a gypsy cab driver by the name of Uro Ama Orji, an immigrant from Nigeria, was savagely attacked by his male passenger and the passenger's female companion as they got out of his cab on Thomas S. Boylan Street. The brutal attack was something straight out of a horror movie. The assailant took his umbrella and jabbed it into the taxi driver's eyeball. His eyes immediately burst open gushing blood all over the taxi. His foot involuntarily hit the gas. The car sped for about a block, smashed into some parked cars, and the driver slumped over dead. The umbrella hit him so hard in the eye that it pierced his brain and killed him. 
Fernando Mateo, the head of the New York Federation of Taxi Drivers, said that the method used to kill Mr. Uro was barbaric and unheard of. He said he's seen stabbings and shootings, but never someone getting poked through the eye and into the brain with an umbrella tip. Police have yet to pin down a motive, though they did find the suspect. Shamel Allen, 28 years old, was discovered hiding in the closet of his friend's house by the police. They booked him, threw him in jail, and he has since been charged with manslaughter and a criminal possession of a weapon. He was even picked out of a police lineup, reducing any chance of him getting away with this brutal crime. Number 2. Inappropriate driver. I wish they'd tell us how many years he got, man. He deserved like 60 years for that. A cab driver in Jordan was recently arrested after he got caught watching inappropriate adult videos inside his cab while parked on the street. This guy was such a pervert that he couldn't even wait until he got home, so he had to indulge while on the job. To make matters worse for this guy, he got busted on video by a passerby who uploaded the gruesome site to social media. The authorities got a hold of the video, launched an investigation, and quickly tracked the guy down and dealt with him. But just wait, because the story gets even more gross. The arrest of the pervert came just days after two separate videos were shared on social media in Jordan of two different people, both cab drivers, committing indecent acts while alone and driving their vehicles through the city. The lesson here is to maybe stay out of taxis the next time you take a trip to Jordan, as these guys are clearly up to no good. And number one, cabin in the woods. A taxi driver in Georgia met a gruesome end when she was murdered. Her name was Rosanna Delgado, and she was last seen on surveillance footage in DeKalb County on April 20th. Four days after she was reported missing, her remains were found burned in a cabin in the woods. Her body had been cut up and the pieces set on fire. The only reason her body was discovered at all was that the police managed to track her phone signal to the site of the murder. The police immediately realized they were dealing with something terrible, so they went and checked through the local surveillance footage of the day Miss Delgado went missing. They found Miss Delgado shopping in a local store with a woman named Megan Cologne, who they arrested on suspicion of murder. They have since arrested four more people in connection with the killing, with three suspects still at large. They have no idea what prompted the horrible crime, and the police are still pretty tight-lipped about the situation because the investigation is ongoing. What we do know is that most of the suspects will probably be charged in connection to the murder, either as murderers themselves or accomplices. Over time, natural selection takes its toll and omits the dumbest people from the gene pool. It's not great news for the people whose head whistles in a crosswind, but for us, it's fantastic, as we can keep entertained by the amusing tales of people with a room temperature IQ who perish due to oh. a lack of intelligence. <laughs> Let's get to it with more <laughs> Darwin Award winners. Dance, nigga! I mean, uh, white guy. I gotta wait until like three Number minutes. Number 16, to say Death the by Beard. Like, how you die from your Hans beard? Steininger served several terms as mayor of the small Austrian village of Braunau Ammen. He had a four and a half foot long beard, which he kept neatly rolled and stuffed in a pocket. When a fire broke out in his village in September 1567, fire Steininger home. found himself at the center of panicking townspeople. His beard loosened from its pouch and unraveled Loose. as he tried to suppress the commotion. Steininger was too rushed to re-roll his beard, so he pushed it out of the way. His decision proved to be fatal when he tripped over his beard at the top of a flight of stairs and tumbled down the steps, breaking his neck along the way. Number 15. Crushed by a Cactus One day in 1982, two young and presumably bored roommates named David Grunman and James Sukochi decided to wander the desert near Lake Pleasant, Arizona with shotguns. During their walk, Ooh. Grunman opened fire on a 10-foot saguaro cactus. It quickly toppled and Grunman then shot two rounds into a 27-foot tall cactus, Ooh. causing a large and heavy arm of the plant to fall off. Grunman was crushed to death by the spiny long oh, saguaro hell arm. No. Saguaros are only found in the Sonoran Desert and are protected by Arizona law. In the case of David Grunman's unlawful behavior, he received a death sentence, courtesy oh. of the cactus he shot. Huh? Number 14. Fatal Test Run As the aviation age took off, a tailor named Franz Reichel decided to pursue a dream that was far beyond the scope of his profession. Oh. In 1911, the aspiring inventor entered a contest to create a safety parachute. He created a parachute suit, 
which was a standard flight suit improvised with rods, rubber lining, and a silk hand. Reichel broke his leg during early tests Nigga. and blamed the chute's failure on the short height he jumped from. No. After a year of lobbying for permission to test the parachute suit from the Eiffel Tower, Reichel was given the green light. Police and onlookers expected him to use test dummies, and when they realized he intended to test the product himself, they tried talking Reichel out of jumping. He was so confident in his parachute suit, however, he took the 187-foot plunge and died on impact with the ground. Aww. Number 13. Shopping Cart Catastrophe One day in 2008, 18-year-old Cameron Bieberly took a joyride in a shopping cart that was attached to the bumper of a car. When the car hit a speed bump, the Florida teen was catapulted 27 feet and landed on his head when he hit the pavement. Oh. He died shortly after. Beaverly's parents became adamant campaigners against car surfing, a trend among teens that has become increasingly popular in recent years. Apparently, a growing number of today's adolescents and young adults need to be shown evidence of a tragedy to avoid dangerous <laughs> driving behaviors that could kill them. Number 12. Motorcycle Helmet Protest Death In the summer of 2011, 55-year-old Philip A. Contos attended a protest against New York State's motorcycle helmet requirement. Around 550 motorcycle enthusiasts rode together without their helmets in a show of solidarity against the safety law. During the demonstration, Contos' 1983 Harley-Davidson fishtailed when he hit the brakes and he was thrown over the handlebars. He hit his head on the pavement and was pronounced dead at the hospital. The medical expert who pronounced Contos dead believed he would have undoubtedly survived the accident if he had been wearing a helmet. Yeah. Abate, the organization that sponsored the ride, maintained their view that motorcyclists should have a choice of whether or not to wear a helmet. Number 11. Yeah. Multitasking Misadventure 20-year-old Kalita Hicks was driving her 1986 T-top Monte Carlo along a dark Kentucky highway at 3 a.m. one morning in August 2010. She had a passenger named Thomas May with her and they decided to switch seats and apparently saw no need to pull over. As Hicks attempted to climb over the T-top and into the passenger seat, her foot hit the steering wheel, oh. causing the car to veer left. Oh. May grabbed the steering wheel and turned it sharply to the right. The swerving caused Hicks to be thrown from the roof of the car. Oh. She hit her head on the guardrail as she landed on the pavement. Hicks was flown to the University of Kentucky Medical Center and died during surgery. Damn. Number 10. Self-Decapitation in 1995, a group of Polish men decided to measure their masculinity, and evidently their intelligence, or maybe lack thereof, by playing drinking games. One of the competitors amputated the end of his foot using what? a chainsaw. In an effort to one-up him, 30-year-old farmer Krzysztof Asninski swung the chainsaw toward his neck and cut his own head off. Oh. We all know that drinking games usually never lead anywhere good. But when it comes to winning the award for collective inebriated stupidity, this one's a no-brainer. Yeah, he got that Number shit. nine, what? party boat. In 2018, a 21-year-old man decided he needed more attention on the booze cruise he was on in Boston Harbor. So he decided to perform vertical push-ups on the railing of the ferry. Oh, the crew no. ordered him to stop which he did briefly until they turned their backs. Soon enough, he faltered and toppled overboard. Several life rings were thrown to within several feet of the man, and a crew member got into the water within five feet to assist, but he was unable to stay afloat and eventually drowned. Mm -hmm. Number eight, self-defenstration. A Toronto attorney named Gary Hoy was incredibly proud of the strength of the windows in his skyscraper. Mm -hmm. So proud, in fact, that he was known to show off the durability of his 24th floor office windows by throwing himself against them. One day in 1993, he decided to impress some incoming students by body checking himself against the glass. The first time, the window held, Nick. as it always had before. Hoy took another run at the glass and what? it popped out of the frame. The lawyer plunged to the pavement below and died from his Stupid. injuries. Peter Lawers, managing partner of the firm, told a local newspaper that Gary was one of the best and brightest. Oh boy! If that's true, I suggest you hire a different firm. Yeah, that's real. Number that seven, dumb. DIY death. In 1996, Mark Gleason made a last-ditch effort to quiet his snoring oh, damn. so his girlfriend, Tracy Lambert, could sleep. 
Doctors had told Gleason that his snoring, which was caused by sinus problems from a car accident, was incurable. But the Scottish couple were determined to get it under control. After taking a few sleeping pills and drinking some wine, Gleason stuffed tampons into his nostrils. What? He fell asleep on Lambert's sofa, and the next morning, she discovered his <laughs> lifeless body. Gleason died from asphyxiation caused by both the tampons and the sleeping pills, which furthered his breathing difficulties. Oh boy. Number 6. Accidentally proving an accident. Oh boy. In an Ohio courtroom in July 1871, lawyer Clement Vallandigham argued that his client Thomas McGeehan was innocent of murder. McGeehan was accused of killing a man named Tom Myers during a bar fight. Vallandigham maintained that Myers accidentally killed himself with his own pistol. To prove it, he used an unloaded gun to demonstrate to the jury how Myers could have done this. That evening, the lawyer set a loaded pistol next to the unloaded one on a table at his hotel. In the process of demonstrating to fellow lawyers how Myers may have shot himself, Vallandigham picked up the loaded gun from the table and shot himself in the abdomen. Oh. He was mortally wounded, but his demonstration apparently worked, and McGeehan was acquitted. <laughs> Number five, fatal nutrition. <laughs> British scientist and nutrition well, fanatic was, Basil Brown worked. consumed a gallon of carrot juice daily and 70 million units of vitamin A over the course of 10 days. The combination of toxins produced the same effect on his liver as alcohol, and he died from cirrhosis. When he died, his skin was bright yellow. Oh. While some people may not know how dangerous a vitamin A toxicity can be, it's common knowledge that overconsuming anything can lead to disastrous results. That's real, bro. Number 4. Obvious but Optional Boundaries in March of 2018, a New Jersey man named Anthony G. headed to his father's house to shovel snow from his driveway. Along the way, Anthony encountered a series of cones warning drivers of a downed wire ahead. He didn't want to waste time on a detour, so he proceeded around the cones. Anthony, who was employed as a New York City electrician and should have been well aware of the hazards of downed wires, paid the ultimate price for his foolishness. When police arrived at the scene, his vehicle was engulfed in flames and he was dead. Number 3. Daredevil Dummy Wang Yangying was a famous Chinese daredevil known for his death-defying stunts atop skyscrapers. Some of his famed acts included doing push-ups on the side of a skyscraper, walking along rooftops, and hanging from high-rise buildings. Oh, fuck it Eventually, up. Yang Ning's risky behavior caught up to him, and he fell from a 62-story oh. skyscraper. His body was found the next day, along with the camera that filmed him losing his grip. The moral of Yang Ning's tragedy is that there are much safer ways to gain stardom, success, and an adrenaline rush. We shouldn't laugh Number at that. 2. Crushed by Car when you're Crush fixing a heavy killer. object, don't sit under it if it's propped up precariously. One slight wrong move and it's game over. Sarunas Masionis learned this lesson the hard way. In mid-2018, he attempted to repair his car while propping it up on a tire and a jack with a wooden block underneath it. The car crushed Masionis. His partner noticed he was blue and a neighbor unsuccessfully tried lifting the car. Efforts to save the man's life were in vain, and he died from asphyxia caused by the fatal chest compression. Oh. Number 1. Wheelchair Elevator Tantrum A wheelchair-bound 40-year-old South Korean man known only as Mr. Lee threw an explosive tantrum when he approached an elevator at a shopping center as the doors closed and couldn't get in. Instead of waiting for the next one, he repeatedly oh, rammed into God. the closed elevator doors, yep, that is. and in an apparent you underestimation of his you own strength, come thrusted yeah. them open. Yeah. Mr. Lee fell into the elevator you shaft and plummeted 19 ah. feet to his death. Ah. Instead of cautioning the general public ah. against the potential consequences ah. of violent anger, shopping center <laughs> officials promised to strengthen their <laughs> elevator doors. <laughs> so which of these stories do you think deserves the number one Darwin Award? Let me know in the- That is terrifyingly funny. When we picture the end, we like to imagine we'll go out comfortably and with dignity. But when outrageous stupidity is allowed too much influence, a person's final moments can often be summed up in two words. Total embarrassment. Continuing this exploration into the people who've removed themselves from the gene pool in spectacularly stupid ways, join me and let's hand out some Darwin Awards. Amazing. Chug of Death 
For as long as humans have known how to make beer, there have been people who drink too much of it. But while beer drinking contests wear excess with pride, the consequences can be dire, as was made very clear in 2013. At a Spanish drinking festival, the contest winner knocked back an astonishing 12 and a half pints of beer in 20 minutes. God dang. Now bearing in mind drinking 12 and a half pints of water in this time would be considered a potentially lethal amount, you can probably imagine the effect that much beer had. After raising his trophy, the champion began vomiting non-stop yeah. before passing out. Yeah. He died soon afterwards from what was most likely yep. alcohol poisoning yep. with a side order of seriously poor decision making. Hey, at least he won. Stupid Hard bastard. to swallow. In ah. July 2019, a man was catching tilapia fish in a river in the Philippines I using a somewhat was... unconventional storage method. He He'd developed a regular habit of storing the fish in his mouth oh, so no. that he could have both hands free Mother to catch more fish what? without needing to return to the shore. But when he popped one particularly vigorous tilapia into his pie hole for safekeeping, it attempted to escape down his throat. The man began choking and ran to his house for help, but the slippery creature proved impossible to retrieve. He died soon after, but his tale lives on as a reminder of why we invented handy little things known as boxes and baskets. Don't eat fish if it's squirrel net hard. Strain. For oh, decades no. now, an old legend has floated around the toilets of the world that Elvis Presley died from overstraining on the loo. Many have been understandably skeptical of the legend, but in January 2020, a Chinese man's death brought that skepticism into question. 72-year-old from Wenzhou, China, went into cardiac arrest after a bout of chronic constipation, during which he reportedly overdid it. Oh, Overstraining nah. isn't usually fatal, but the man's history of heart disease meant his blood pressure dropped to lethally low levels, and his heart stopped. But at least he died on a throne, even if it was porcelain. Oh. Over in a flash. In August 2019, when a housekeeper at an Atlanta hotel entered a room for tidying, she was shocked when the man inside exposed himself to her. Oh. Disgusted, she called security. But when security confronted the man, he fled, attempting to jump from his balcony to another. Seeing as he was 10 stories up, this probably should have raised alarm bells for him. But in the least surprising twist of the century, his escape plan failed and he plummeted 10 floors onto the pavement below. Yeah. What a chilling expose. With his dick out. Ten. <laughs> catch. And in 2017, a 67-year-old Pokemon Go user in Singapore took oh. the excitement of catching a new pocket monster to another level. No, and not moments Pokemon after catching Go, Lapras bro. and Granbull as new additions to his 200 Pokemon Strong collection, no. he keeled over in the throes of a heart attack. What? He died soon afterwards, and an investigation revealed that the poor fellow's pre-existing heart condition had left him vulnerable to overstimulation and overexertion that scurrying around for Pokemon can induce. While he's not the first person to die while using Pokemon Go, he is, quite possibly, the first to die from the excitement of a catch. It seems Gotta Catch em All might need to be revised to Gotta Catch Some of em Calmly and at a leisurely pace. <laughs> Fantastic. What's the saying? An eye for an eye? Well, how about a tooth for a fang? The latter saying proved more fitting in a village in Gwaharat, India in July 2019. While a group of villagers were gathering maize from a field, a snake slithered onto the path. Most of them distanced themselves from the reptile, but one man stood strong, determined to dispatch the scaly fiend. He grabbed the snake, which instantly began biting him on the hands and face. Shocked but not defeated, the man played the ultimate alpha move. Yep. He bit the snake right back, yep. killing it. Yep. And while the man won the battle, he lost the war and died from the snake's potent venom later that day. Whether it was a badass or simply stupid way to die, I'll leave that up to you guys in Kinda the comments both. below to decide. Why are you fighting poisonous Rooftop snakes? Rail Rider. In 2019, a self-proclaimed Russian daredevil train surfer mounted the roof of a high-speed service from St. Petersburg to Moscow. Atop the train, which reached speeds of 155 miles per hour, the thrill seeker accidentally made contact with the high voltage overhead apparatus that provides the train with power. Before he knew it, 4,000 volts were scorching through him, setting both him and the carriage roof ablaze. On the bright side, he would have died almost instantly, but let's be honest, with a hobby like train surfing, the end was never going to be pretty for this bright spark. <laughs> Three-story slip and slide. Lawyers are often considered to be some of the brightest folks in society, but alcohol has a phenomenal ability to turn book smarts into, ouch, that smarts. <laughs> at a private party event at the Brooklyn Museum in 2019, an up-and-coming lawyer had a not-so-bright idea while enjoying the fun and frivolities. 
For whatever reason, he decided to slide down the banisters of a third-story stairwell with his motor functions notably impaired. In one swift motion, he slipped over the railing and plunged to the ground below. Oh boy! Fall proved fatal and also proved that third-story stairway slip and slides are never a good idea. Never a good idea! Don't do it! Action woman. Action-packed Hollywood blockbusters are great and all, but when people try to apply that kind of high-octane activity to their own lives, it rarely ends well. Fortunately, a woman from Georgia realized that a little too late in August 2019. The craziest day of her life began at 7.30 a.m. when she stole a truck, which soon ran out of gas. Aww. Shortly after pulling over, a kind stranger stopped to help the stranded woman, a helpful gesture that resulted in the woman stealing the stranger's car. Sounds she about cruised right. off like a maniac, crashing into several vehicles until the car could no longer be driven. Yep. With a newfound taste for auto theft of the grandest kind, she attempted to steal another and car. Got shot. She had to abandon the attempt after realizing the car she'd taken had a manual transmission and she was an automatic kind of gal. With police closing in, the incompetent criminal went for the big finish. She leapt onto a passing semi-truck for a quick escape. Unfortunately, Vin Diesel movies make this type of thing look much easier than it is, and the woman lost her grip, slipping under the trailer and being immediately fatally crushed. For unhinged criminals, reality eventually hits like a truck. <laughs> the Price of Theft when a man stole a shirt in Puerto Rico in 2019, his hasty attempts to remove the security tag when he got home proved unexpectedly lethal. His tool of choice was a knife, and he decided to try to pop the tag off while still wearing the shirt. This unwise decision resulted in the knife slipping and plunging into his side. Of course. By the time his horrified wife found him, he was already dead. Who would have thought shoplifting could escalate to self-inflicted murder so quickly? Self Story of a lifetime. In this age of rampant obsession with social media, the stupidity of desperate attention seeking is increasingly resulting in utterly idiotic, easily avoidable deaths. Like in Australia in 2019, when a group of young, overly excited women broadcast their annex over Snapchat while driving on the highway. The two passengers could be seen distracting the driver and encouraging her to drive erratically, which she did, intentionally veering into oncoming oh traffic, my God. the girls all seemed to be having a heck of a laugh at the expense of other drivers. What are these hoes that doing? is until the laughter turned to screams. While the driver was distracted by her passengers, she veered off again into oncoming traffic, this time unintentionally. Seconds later, she crashed head-on with another car. While the people in the other car as well as her passengers survived, the girl driving was killed on impact. It's a lesson that really shouldn't need to be said. Don't tempt fate with exceedingly dangerous and dumb behavior. That's real. Especially behind the wheel of a car. That's real. Tenderizing beef. He's beating Cows probably don't like to be eaten, but if this story from June 2019 is anything to go by, they hate being stolen even more. Aww. When an Indian man stole a cow from a village in Karnataka, he managed to lead it over a mile away without detection and proudly thought he'd got off scot-free. But when he it? tried to load the animal into his vehicle, it became clear that the cow had different plans. With a swift, brutal Ooh. kick directly to the danglers, Ooh. the cow caused internal trauma and rupturing so severe, the man was dead by the time authorities found him. Ooh. If this case of testicular tenderization could teach us anything, no. it's that cow thieves should probably wear iron jacket. Testicular strap. tenderization. Sharp okay. shooter. Oh boy. By the time you reach the age of 47, you think you'd have picked up a decent amount of common sense. But at a party in 1998, a man proved that notion wrong when he bet that his 47-year-old buddy couldn't shoot a can off his head. Confident in his oh abilities, the friend took up the bet. He loaded oh the handgun, took aim, and fired. Oh my I'm God. sure you can put the pieces together of what happened next. Oh my Let's God. just say the man with the can was left distinctly lacking in the face department, while the friend was left facing a murder charge. Oh. Roach dinner. While eating insects is an increasingly common practice around the world, and not inherently stupid, it's hard to deny the underlying idiocy of an insect eating contest. When one such contest was held at a Florida reptile store in 2012, the grand prize was a mighty python worth $850. One Florida man stepped up to the task with victory on his mind and scoffed down dozens of cockroaches and worms. No. He won, but his no. victory was cut short when he staggered outside, vomiting and struggling to breathe. No. Eventually, he fell to the ground and was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. It wasn't the quality of the insects that killed him. They were bred to regulation standards for consumption. It was the quantity he ate, which when he started to vomit, came back up and clogged his airways, oh. choking him to death. Oh. So remember, 
If you're going to numb on those cockroaches in your no, garage, no, no, no. limit yourself to a bowl full. No, no. Railway to heaven. Oh, no. The ultimate example of deadly railway stupidity came at the very end of 2019, combining the equally dumb notions of social media obsession and flagrant disregard for self-preservation. While on a train journey in Mumbai, a young man decided to hop on an unbelievably stupid trend that involves hanging off of moving trains and filming the act. Unfortunately for him, after feeling the breeze on his face for a moment, he soon felt something much harder. Oh a metal girder from a bridge the oh. train passed over smashed him straight back into the carriage with unbelievable force. Oh. By the time his friends got him to a hospital, he was DOA. Oh. Sure hope it was worth it. Oh. Having a blast. Hey. It would be dishonest to pretend yeah. fatal stupidity is a new thing. No. It's just that with the rapid sharing of information nowadays, we get to hear cases of it more often. But a story from the diary of a First World War soldier may take the cake for one of the most unbelievable acts of deadly dumbness of all time. The soldier recounts the story of a division making their way through enemy land when one of the men finds an unexploded mortar shell. Instead of wisely running as far away as possible, the soldier decided to pick it up and play with it. As others looked on, somehow forgetting the very real danger at hand, they cheered for him to drop it on its nose. And like a good soldier, he did as he was told. He dropped the mortar and it exploded. 25 men were killed and 31 more were wounded. And thanks to this soldier, thousands more people will have suffered facial injuries from face palming with excessive force. Number 19, Airless Airhead. When a Brazilian farmer discovered a beehive on his property in 2002, he knew precisely two things. Bees can sting and they need to be removed with fire. No one knows why he decided that fire was his best option. All we do know is that he fashioned a makeshift helmet from a plastic bag to save himself from both the smoke and the bee stings. Wow! But besides all his careful planning, he didn't bother to think that he might have to breathe and failed to poke air holes into the plastic bag. When he didn't return home, his wife set out to find him and soon discovered him suffocated Ooh. beneath the beehive. He was untouched Ooh. by the bees though. Number 18, oh. Chimney Grenade. One afternoon in 2005, Marco decided to clean the chimney in his workshop, but when he tried to use a simple broom, he realized it was too small for the job. Clearly, he had to improvise. He decided what he needed was a chain to pull the broom through the chimney and a heavy object to weigh it down. Looking in his workshop, he thought he'd found the perfect thing, a grenade. All he had to do now was weld it to the broom and chain except he failed to think about what could happen as he switched on his welding equipment. As soon as the flame met the grenade, it exploded, killing him instantly. The chimney, however, was left completely untouched by the blast. Oh. Number 17, Behind Enema Lines. Texas Enema shop lines. owner Michael was an alcoholic, but not an ordinary one. Due to a painful throat condition, he couldn't drink through his mouth. This meant he had to find other ways to consume his liquor, and his wife said he soon became addicted to enemas. No! This popular method is far more dangerous, as alcohol popular. is absorbed directly through the capillaries in oh. the rectum. So oh. one night he wanted to get blind drunk and decided the only way to do it was to pour 100 fluid ounces Absolutely of sherry not. at his rear end. What he didn't know was that after he'd passed out, the alcohol kept absorbing and he was dead by the morning. Zesty. The toxicology report stated he had a blood alcohol level of 0.47%, meaning he'd pretty much embalmed himself. Number oh. 16, Drink. parking brake fail. Drink when we're constantly anus? reminded to recycle, plastic bags can be a source of annoyance. So when a 58-year-old Australian woman was driving to the grocery store and thought she'd forgotten her plastic bags, she promptly stopped her car to check the trunk. If only she was more worried about her parking than she was about her grocery bags, she would have remembered to put the handbrake on. As she checked the trunk, the car began rolling backwards, crushing her to death. Somehow, she managed to run herself over. Number 15 irresponsible. A Romanian man in 2002 decided he would skip checking the local train schedules and instead deduce if the train was coming through the power of his own ears. Business. Lying on the railway line, he pressed his ears to the tracks to hear if the train was approaching. Clearly his hearing wasn't all he thought it was because he never heard it coming. He was hit by an oncoming express train and died immediately. Number 14. Lava La Vida Loca don't you just hate it when your lava lamp doesn't heat up quickly enough? Well, 24-year-old Philip did. After plugging in his lava lamp and waiting a few minutes, he was disappointed to see that nothing was happening. Eager to get it working, he decided to speed up the process by placing it on a hot stove. 
But with the contents of a lava lamp only being designed to withstand temperatures of up to 40 degrees, it quickly overheated and exploded. Poor Philip was killed when the glass from the lamp shattered and penetrated his heart. Not so groovy. Number 13. Under Pressure Two bored comrades in a Romanian aluminum factory decided to have some fun with an air hose actually used for industrial machinery. When blowing dust off their clothes became boring, they cranked things up a notch and decided to remove their clothes entirely. No. Things quickly moved below the belt when one of the guys decided he was going to see what happened when he pumped six bars of atmospheric pressure into his anus. Gay! Not only did he break employment regulations, but he, broke he also broke right through his intestinal his tract and he died he within minutes within from severe minutes. internal hemorrhaging. Very painful. Number 12. Danger Zone in 2017, two United States Navy pilots got a little too carried away with Top Gun when they decided to completely abandon safety regulations to perform daredevilish stunts. Reaching astonishing speeds while flying as low as 210 feet, a good 300 feet below their minimum permitted altitude, oh, things no. were bound to take a downward turn as they swapped controls back and forth. Descending too low and slow, one of the pilots traded off controls to his co-pilot but it was too late. The T-45C Goshawk crashed before they could safely eject themselves. That's what Instructing pilot Lieutenant Birch was fond of the phrase, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots. Mm. He failed to mention that there are also outrageously dumb ones. Number 11, Cruise Control. The fastest human can run over 27 miles per hour, but that's only after accelerating during a run up. A Dutch teenager in 2004 thought he could do better than that and get close to that speed straight away. In a bid to impress his friends, he set his car to cruise control at 20 miles per hour and told them he was going to jump out and run alongside the car before jumping back in and driving away. But his shocked friends could only look on as he stepped out the moving car and immediately smashed his head on the tarmac. He died the following day. Number 10. Treasure Hunt Described as the world's largest treasure hunt, the geocaching app allows people to follow online clues and find small treasure boxes, known as geocaches, hidden in their area. Sounds like harmless fun until someone decides to head down a flooded waterway in search of trinkets. When meteorologists warned the Czech Republic of impending rainstorms, most people paid attention. But not this group of geocachers who thought it would be clever to climb into an underground waterworks tunnel. Although two members of the group survived, two others were swept away, with one young man still reported missing. Number 9. Dying for a Smoke Nobody likes long bus journeys. They're cramped and boring, not to mention you're basically sharing a tin can with dozens of strangers and their farts. One Scottish woman especially hated the idea of spending 12 hours stuck on a coach from Glasgow to London without a cigarette. Passengers reported that she grew increasingly agitated and watched in horror as she began throwing herself at the passenger door. The bus was traveling at 60 miles per hour when she tumbled out into the road before falling under the wheels of the bus. Smoking really does kill. Number 8. Foot Rest Most people go to the movies to see the drama unfold on the screen, not beside them. When a local man booked tickets in the VIP area of the cinema complex, he was hoping for a good time. What he got instead was a ticket to the Darwin Awards. After dropping his phone beneath his seat, he tried to retrieve it, only to get his head wedged inside the footrest. If this wasn't bad enough, he then suffered a cardiac arrest and died in hospital. Number 7. Victoria Falls 50-year-old Michael was a clever man. Not only was he a college headmaster, he was also a respected geography lecturer on the conference's circuit. While on a trip to the Victoria Falls Bridge, he was happily taking photos of his girlfriend when he dropped his glasses over the edge. Thinking he wouldn't be able to enjoy the view of the glorious Victoria Falls without them, he tried to retrieve them, only to fall 40 oh, feet to his death. No. Number 6. Killer Whalebone Nigga. This historic entry into the Darwin Awards sees another clever man, founding father of the USA, Governor Morris, come to an untimely end through an eye-watering DIY medical procedure. When Morris began suffering from a blockage in his urethra, Ooh. he took matters into his own hands. Inserting a whalebone into his Nigga! urethra, all he needs to do was give himself a deadly infection. Oh. He died November 6th, 1816, probably feeling pretty oh. sick. Number 5. Distracted Driver 58-year-old Clifford Jones was driving without a seatbelt. He was also driving without pants. When a Nigga. regular drone just wasn't interesting enough, he decided to watch a bit of adult content on his phone and Come. have some fun. If only he'd kept hey. his hands on the wheel. 
with the blood rushing away from his head, he grew increasingly distracted and lost control of his car. As it crashed, he hurtled through the sunroof and died on impact. Number four, posing with a grenade. Dumbass. Faking a smile, posing with angry animals, posing with a primed grenade. All things people will do for attention online. Yes, you heard me right. In 2017, Alexander Sasha Chechik from Russia pulled the pen out of a hand grenade while in his car and posted photographs of himself holding it to his girlfriend, probably as a way to show off his balls of brainless steel. A source who spoke to the Russian news service reporting the incident said, the guy didn't manage to insert the hand grenade pen back in. The pen is the safety mechanism. It's the lever on the side of the firing mechanism that activates the grenade when released. However, it's still not worth risking it by removing the pen. Police categorized his death as an accident and not suicide, as they believed he thought it wouldn't explode as long as he didn't throw it. Number three, bear selfie. Prabhu Batara from India was on his way home from a wedding when he spotted a black bear. Seeing this as a great photo opportunity, he got close to the bear and attempted to take a selfie with it. As he did, the bear mauled him. Oh. He died shortly after due to his injuries. My advice, stay far away from bears. They may be cute, but if you photograph them at an angle that makes them look fat, it's game over. Nigga. Number two, sawing into a grenade. Two pathologists what? at a German symposium dinner told the tale of a man who stumbled across a World War II grenade. Instead of staying well clear, he wanted to open it up to see how it worked. Back home, he placed it inside a vise and tried to saw it perfectly in half. The saw detonated the grenade and the man died from a fatal head injury. Upon post-mortem, it was discovered there was very little brain matter left inside his skull, although the two pathologists joked that there couldn't have been much to start with. Before we get to our number one dumbest Darwin award, here are a few honorable mentions. There's this man who planked on a tiger. There's no way he walked away from that one. Then there's this guy who bit a tiger's tail. Wait, is that the same guy? Poor tiger. Oh, and this woman who got something stuck in her handgun. Nice. Okay, so back to the final award in our countdown. Number one, smoking hot. Gary Banning from North Carolina was at his friend's house when he spotted a mysterious jar of tasty looking liquid. Assuming it was hot sauce and without bothering to check, he flipped off the lid and started to drink it, but he soon discovered it wasn't hot sauce at all, oh! but a jar of gasoline. The shock of chugging gasoline was too much for Gary, so he spat it out, Nigga. then tried to calm down with a cigarette. Mother as soon as he lit it, he caught fire and died the next what? day from his injury. No. So which of these- Homie gonna drink gasoline, then have the nerve to light a cigarette. If any of you guys have passed away like that, do me a favor, don't tell anybody you know me. Nobody can know that I know you. Number 10, Roller Coaster. In 2021, at the Lagoon Theme Park in Utah, a 32-year-old man died after attempting a foolish stunt on a cable car ride. In full view of horrified families, the guy stands up in the cart, climbs over the safety bar, and dangles 50 feet or about 15 meters above the ground. He was seen hanging from the car while facing in towards it as it crossed above a fountain surrounded by people, uh -oh. many of whom stopped walking and pointed up at the man in complete shock. It didn't take long before he lost his grip and fell to the ground. The unidentified man was at the park with his family, though he was on the ride alone. It's still unclear how he ended up over the side of the ride and whether he let go of the bar deliberately or fell after being unable to climb back in. Paramedics quickly arrived on the scene to render medical aid before ultimately deciding to airlift the man to the University of Utah Hospital, where he was listed in critical condition. But unfortunately, he died from his injuries. The Skyride was first installed at the park in 1974 and has operated without incident ever since. It only takes one person to think they're either Tom Cruise or Evil Knievel to ruin a family's fun. Number yep. 9. Pleasure? You know how some people say if they die young, at least they'll die happy or die doing what they love? Well, in this next story, it's like that. Sort of. In 2015, a healthy 31-year-old British woman suffered a heart attack and died while using a sex toy. Yup, you heard that right. Friends of Nicola Payton found her dead in her bed at her home in Churchester, England. She was discovered with a vibrator by her side and a pornographic video playing on her laptop. Everyone that knew her said that she seemed fit and well, even up to the day before her death. Completely ruined the uterus. Good Lord, man. You know how it is nowadays, man. Females, they're trying to get their shit beaten down. Ain't none of that love-making bullshit. They're trying to get that shit killed. 
depth. Pathologist Dr. Richard Jones found no abnormalities in her organs. Quote, there is nothing in the heart which I can find to explain why Nicola died suddenly, but I suspect it does represent a sudden cardiac arrest. In Nicola's case, there is another potential trigger, and that is an increase in heart rate or blood pressure because of physical or emotional arousal. In other words, she got so turned on she had a heart attack and died, leaving all the evidence and clues of what happened right next to her. N Excuse me? She nutted so hard she died? We might have to start being careful, man. We fuck around and kill one of these hoes. Number 8. Atomic Wedgie Days before Christmas in 2013, 33-year-old Bradley Davis from Oklahoma was charged with murder when he gave his stepdad an atomic wedgie. He killed his stepfather, 58-year-old Denver St. Clair, during a drunken fight at their home in Potawatomi. The family was having cocktails at the stepdad's residence when he started talking nonsense about his wife, Davis's mother. This made Davis really angry. So angry that he knocked his stepdad to the ground, grabbed his underwear, and pulled the elastic waistband up as high as he could and put it around his neck. The medical examiner reported that the cause of death was due to asphyxiation and blunt force trauma from the elastic band that was stretched way too tightly over his neck. The elastic waistband had also left a deep ligature mark, and there was evidence of blood splattered around the kitchen and the living room. Nobody knows if Davis actually meant to kill his stepdad, but he did, and he was held in Potawatomi County without bond. His lawyer wasn't available for comment. Imagine him being in jail and an inmate asking him what he's in for. Number 7. Crossing the Border In April of 2022, a native of Mexico decided she was going to cross the border the hard way. The woman got the brilliant idea to scale a border wall. Her name hasn't been released for privacy reasons, but we do know that she was 32 years old and desperate to get into the United States. One night, under the cover of darkness, she approached the Mexican side of the wall opposite of Douglas, Arizona. Using a climbing harness, she scaled the side of it, but couldn't make it all the way down. Somehow, she got her leg stuck. She was then hung upside down from her harness on the American side of the wall in Arizona. The Cochise County Sheriff's Office doesn't know how long she was hanging there, but it was long enough that all the blood rushed to her head and killed her. Hey, she made it over the wall, she just never touched down. Believe it or not, this was not actually the first time something like this had happened. Earlier in April, almost the exact same thing occurred in Texas. A migrant trying to scale the wall fell off of the barrier and landed on U.S. soil, but unfortunately didn't survive. He died at the hospital while his friend, a migrant who had also fallen off the barrier near Clint, Texas, and suffered a fracture to his hand. The survivor was then returned to Mexico by the Customs and Border Protection officials. What's the craziest way you've heard of someone trying to cross the border? Let us know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Sasquatch Squashed The Sasquatch prank is when someone camouflages themselves and jumps in front of people and tries to scare them. It's ridiculous, and so is the way this guy died. In 2012, 44-year-old Randy Lee Tenley tragically died while trying to do this very prank. According to the Montana Highway Patrol, Tenley was walking in the right-hand lane of US Highway 91 when he was hit by a car. Probably in shock by what just happened, he laid injured in the road. Then, bam, a second car hit him. The impact left Tenley dead at the scene. At the time of the incident, the police mentioned that Tentley was wearing a ghillie suit, a full-body camouflage military uniform. The suit is designed to make a person seamlessly blend into their surroundings, not exactly something you want to be wearing on a busy highway. That fateful day, Tentley woke up and chose the prank. He put on his suit and wanted to make people believe they were seeing Bigfoot. The police found out his motive after talking with his friends. Although Tenley's prank ended miserably, this wasn't the first time the Sasquatch bamboozle made the headlines. In 2008, Damn. a Georgian man thought he found Sasquatch remains, but it turns out that he found a rubber Sasquatch costume smeared with roadkill. Another sighting was reported in Manitoba Provincial Park, but the unknown hairy beast he thought he saw was actually just a teenager wearing a silly gorilla mask. Number 5. Self-Service Car Wash In April of 2022, a man in Southern California was killed in an apparent freak accident at a car wash when he got trapped between his vehicle and the machinery. 56-year-old Rene Tacte Jamey went to get his car cleaned at the- That nigga got washed to death. Disrespectful way to die. Girl car wash. Everything would have been fine if he followed the simple car wash rules. Do not exit your vehicle. But for some reason, Jamey decided the rules didn't apply to him. An alarm went off for about 30 minutes, but the victim was not discovered until another customer arrived and called 911. 
According to Lieutenant Scott Walters, officers found the car still in gear along with the evidence that Jemay was dragged by the vehicle, ouch, which rolled forward after he exited it. Jemay then became wedged between the left side of the vehicle and the left column of the car wash machinery. Police freed the man and administered CPR, but he was barely hanging on. He was taken to the hospital where he died a short time later. Investigators are looking through surveillance footage to determine exactly what happened at the self-service business, where people drive forward and stop when prompted by lights and signs. Pretty basic stuff. The incident was deemed a traffic collision, not an industrial accident, because the driver had total control of his car the entire time. Jemay literally drove into the car wash for an unknown reason and tried to exit his vehicle. Failure to follow these rules cost him his life. Damn. Number 4. Recycled When someone imagines a good place to take a nap, it's not usually inside of a recycling dumpster. But in April of 2022, just after 6 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, a man in British Columbia, Canada, decided just that. According to the local Pendleton police, the 52-year-old man had been sleeping in an unlocked recycling dumpster when the truck came in to take out the trash. The recycling truck did what it's supposed to do. It scooped up the bin and then dumped the recycling directly into the truck's compactor. They didn't check to see if anyone was asleep inside of it because why would there be? The next following moments must have been truly terrifying for the man in the back. The driver of the recycling truck heard a scream from the back, but by then it was too late. The sleeping man had woken up in a smelly pit of doom and was literally crushed to death. The driver oh. called 911 and stopped immediately, but there was nothing anyone could do to save the man. He simply chose the worst possible place to take a nap. Number 3. Hair Dye In 2011, 17-year-old Tabitha McCord died in one of the most shocking ways imaginable. She was at her friend's house, Heather Goodhall, for a girl's night. The besties were hanging out, munching on snacks, watching the X Factor, and dyeing their hair. Tabitha was a typical teenage girl, always trying to keep up with trends and appearances, and she often dyed her hair different colors to achieve new looks. The hair dye had only been on her head for about 20 minutes when Heather heard her friend making noises that sounded very uncomfortable. Tabitha got up and ran to the bathroom. A few minutes later, she came back into the room and started frantically pulling the foils from her hair. Heather said in an interview she started shouting, No, no, and my mom's boyfriend held her and tried to calm her down. It was really scary. Her eyes started going all funny, and then she started being sick. She just looked like a rag doll, limp, just lying there. Tabitha was taken to the hospital, but died shortly after. Police said the death was unexplained and an examination would be carried out. A chemical called P-phenylenediamine was reportedly suggested as a possible cause for the sudden reaction. Emma Meredith, head of scientific research at the Cosmetic Toiletry and Perfumery Association, explained it's used in a lot of dyes that darken hair color. Quote, to have such an immediate and violent reaction to this or any other cosmetic product is exceedingly rare. End quote. Number 2. Charging and Lightning In 2021, Raja Ferreira de Oliveira was charging her phone when the unthinkable happened. It was a stormy Sunday in Brazil and Raja was at home staying dry from all the rain. Her phone battery was dwindling as she scrolled through social media, so she plugged it into the wall and sat back to continue scrolling. What she hadn't anticipated was that a lightning bolt would shoot down from the cloudy sky and strike her house. Nobody ever really thinks that it's going to happen to them, but unfortunately for Raja, fate chose her that day. That lightning bolt traveled through the house, entered the electric socket, and went up the charging cord and straight into Raja's body. The intense electrical shock killed her on the spot. Damn. It was a total freak accident that nobody would ever imagine. And yet, Raja was the third person in the Brazilian state of Para that got electrocuted during that same week. It appeared Mother Damn. Nature was targeting one location. A man named Semio Tavares was talking on his phone when he too got struck by lightning and died, with his phone acting as a lure for the electricity to come down and strike him. Number 1. Hiccups Hiccups are super annoying, and everyone knows it, but most of the time they're pretty harmless and they go away after a few minutes. It's not like they're deadly, right? Wrong. In 2019, an old man in Taiwan had hiccups for two whole weeks. Oh, hiccups no. aren't necessarily a sign of an underlying condition, but hiccups could be a symptom of a serious health problem if it persists for an abnormally long period of time, like two weeks. The 77-year-old was admitted to Taipei Veterans General Hospital after he experienced hiccups that wouldn't stop, and he had no appetite to eat. He said before he died that any time he ate or drank that the hiccups would just get worse, and as a result of not getting enough nourishment, he got very weak. Dr. Gao Zhujin from the emergency department thought that the man was suffering from indigestion, but he later suspected that the patient could have been having some heart problems. The man was given an electrocardiograph test and then was diagnosed with an acute heart attack. He was immediately sent for surgery, but unfortunately died a week later. Damn.
Number 10. The Perfect Disguise when breaking the law, it's best to wear a disguise so that law enforcement and other witnesses won't recognize you, and it's easier to get away with the crime. On July 31st, 2009 in South Carolina, that's exactly what 24-year-old Thomas James and 23-year-old Michael Gregory Thomas decided to do. Sheriff Leon Lott said the two suspects entered a Sprint PCS store armed with guns and demanded money from the employees. Holding the staff at gunpoint, the criminals stole wallets, purses, and credit cards before forcing the workers into a bathroom while they fled. The men had what they thought was a clever disguise by spray painting their faces gold in order to conceal their identities during the robbery. Investigators learned that after the robbery, James started having difficulty breathing and died shortly after. The coroner ran a toxicity test on James and discovered that he had inhaled a little too much of the gold spray paint fumes and consequently died because of it. Witnesses identified Michael Thomas as one of the robbers and he was arrested a few weeks after the crime. So in case you were wondering, spray painting your face doesn't really conceal your character and it just might kill you. Number 9. Getting Busy in September 2019, a couple decided to get busy on a third floor balcony at a graduation house party in Quito, Ecuador. And apparently they were too busy to realize just how high up they were. The naked couple tumbled over the edge while romping and plunging to their deaths. The bodies of the unnamed 28-year-old woman and her 35-year-old lover were discovered sprawled on the adjacent terrace by a neighbor who heard a crash and rushed outside to see what the unusual commotion was. A heartbroken relative of the unfortunate female victim that fell said she was the mother of an 8-year-old girl. Police District Operations Chief Christian Truillo said that the detectives are investigating how the accident happened. But reports from local media suggest that the passionate couple were simply unaware of the height of the balcony wall and its secureness and toppled over it while having sex. Number 8. Buried Alive In 2021, a pastor in Africa died after he, in an effort to prove he was truly a messenger from God, buried himself for three days while pledging he would rise again. 22-year-old James Sakara, a pastor from the Zion Church in Chadiza, Zambia, wanted to demonstrate to his congregation that he had been anointed by the Lord and could perform the miraculous. Yeah. James insisted on being buried alive in an underground tomb for three days. Though his followers were skeptical, he managed to convince a couple members with his scheme. He had them bind his hands and bury him three feet or just about a meter under the dirt. Obvious to most, the pastor's theological knowledge was significantly lacking. Before he attempted his resurrection, he even quoted Jesus' instructions at the Last Supper, quote, Do this in remembrance of me, and insisted it referred to being buried and resurrected, not about taking communion. Three days later, congregation members dug him up and found a dead corpse. They attempted a series of rituals to, quote, complete the resurrection, but their results were in vain. Number 7. Titanic Pose In May 2022, a man tragically drowned as he was attempting to copy the iconic, quote, King of the World Titanic Pose with his girlfriend. Dumbass. Two 23-year-olds, Furkan Sifsi and Mini Dinar, tumbled over into the sea in Izmit, Turkey after trying to create the pose Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet did in the famous Titanic scene. Oh boy! You know the one, Winslet stands at the bow of the ship with her arms out like a bird and Leo comes in behind her and holds her at the waist. The couple, who had been drinking alcohol on a fishing trip, chose the edge of the pier for the perfect picture. Furkan and Minnie reportedly crossed the security chain to do the pose on the edge, but their imitation went horribly wrong when tragedy struck and both of them fell into the sea. Local fishermen witnessed their tumble and rushed to the couple's aid, with one of them able to rescue Minnie after she grabbed onto the end of a fishing rod. She was pulled to safety, but her boyfriend wasn't so lucky. He disappeared uh. under the waves. Emergency services were called to the scene to search for the young man, and a diving team found his lifeless body two hours after the ordeal. Damn. Would you rather fall off a cruise ship into the ocean and be stranded for six hours, or spend the night stuck in a room with a vicious and rabid cat? Tell us which would be worse in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Methadone Underwear In August 2014, an inmate at a Kentucky jail died after eating methadone-soaked underwear that was smuggled into the prison by a cellmate. See, that just goes to proof that eating anus is not good for your health.
55-year-old Michael Jones was let out on a release day from Jessamine County Jail to attend a funeral, but he had some friends inside and decided to bring the inmates a little treat. Allegedly, he brought back drug-laced underpants, which went undetected by prison guards as he was wearing them. Jones cut up the briefs and shared them with his cellmates, including 33-year-old Corey McQuarrie. McQuarrie started to feel sick and complained to the guards, but declined to tell them what he had eaten. The next morning, he was found lying unresponsive in his cell. He was taken to the hospital, but was pronounced dead later that day. During an investigation into his death, jail officials learned that he had consumed pieces of underwear that had been doused with liquid methadone. Police suspect he died of a drug overdose. Number 5 Shopping Cart Crash In 2008, a Florida teenager named Cameron Bieberly participated in something called a car surfing. Car surfing typically involves standing on the back of a moving vehicle or being pulled by a car. Cameron thought it would be a fun idea to take a joyride in a shopping cart that was attached to the back of his friend's car. The 18-year-old's fun was cut short, though, when the car hit a speed bump at 42 miles an hour or just about 68 kilometers an hour, hurling him 27 feet or just about 8 meters throughout the air. Cameron landed headfirst onto the concrete and died almost instantly. His friend who was driving the car, 26-year-old Adam Smith, was charged with vehicular homicide and received a four-year prison sentence. Cameron's entirely avoidable death left his family heartbroken. The That's teen's insane. father said that the tragedy had destroyed their lives. The family blamed the popular show Jackass for inspiring his son to try the stunt. But many will argue that, at the end of the day, Cameron was an adult who knowingly made a dangerous decision. Number 4 Hurricane Real Party On August 17, 1969, Party. Hurricane Camille roared towards the Mississippi coast with sustained winds of an incredible 190 miles per hour, or just over 300 kilometers per hour. Nigga, it what? swept over Bay St. Louis, Mississippi as a Category 5 storm. Oh, Residents no. all along the coast fled the wrath of the mighty Hurricane Camille, but one group chose to ride the storm out rather than evacuate. 24 residents of the infamous Richelieu Manor Apartments in Past Christian chose not to flee and instead held a hurricane party. Common sense isn't that common. The apartment where the party was held was located in the direct path of the hurricane's eye wall. The storm completely destroyed the building, leaving nothing but a concrete slab. 23 of the 24 party attendees were killed. Camille is one of the strongest named hurricanes to ever hit the United States. More than 250 people died, and the cost of damages was over $1.4 billion. How stupid do you have to a hurricane party? I know cars are flying above us along with trees and human people, but no, we gonna play this Playboy card you turn up! Purr, 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 purr. Like, come on, bruh. Number three, eating slugs. In November 2018 in Sydney, Australia, 19-year-old Sam Ballard was drinking with his friends when they dared him to eat a slug yep. that was crawling across his patio. You it was just ass. a silly dare. What's you the worst ass. that can happen? Every Sam no. reached for the slimy creature and gulped it down. How would he know that the slug carried a potentially deadly worm? Well, it did, and it put him into a coma that lasted more than a year, paralyzing his body and ultimately taking his life. After downing the slug, Sam became weak and started to complain of severe pain in his legs. Katie Ballard, Sam's mother, told news outlets that at first they had worried he might have multiple sclerosis, which had afflicted her husband, but doctors said that wasn't the case. Sam then told his mother and medical professionals he had eaten a slug, and that's when doctors were able to confirm rat lungworm disease from the infected little invertebrate. Rat lungworm disease is caused by a parasitic worm, and as the name suggests, the parasite lodges in the lungs of rats and is later excreted in its feces. So the slug Sam swallowed had eaten rat dung or the parasite and became infected, which infected Sam. And instead of passing through his digestive tract, the worm crawled into his brain. This caused Sam to fall into a coma for 420 days. When he woke up, he was paralyzed and unable to move without intense effort or eat without a tube. It wasn't long after he woke up that he died. Number 2. Too Much Caffeine In January of 2022, Tom God Mansfield from damn. the UK made a grave mistake measuring his caffeine powder. He died of a caffeine overdose when he mixed himself a drink that accidentally contained the caffeine equivalent to hundreds of cups of coffee. 
The 29-year-old worked as a personal trainer, and one day he ordered himself a 100-gram bag of a new caffeine powder. Tom often used caffeine powder to supplement his drinks, but when he measured the powder on a scale, he didn't get his math right. The recommended dose was roughly 600 milligrams, but he accidentally used several grams instead. Oh. This resulted in him mixing a drink with the power of 200 cups of coffee jammed into one. Immediately after he drank his toxic coffee mix, he clutched his chest in pain and started foaming at the mouth. His wife was shocked and terrified, but managed to call an ambulance. Tom went immediately into cardiac arrest and died before doctors could do anything to save him. Reaching a conclusion of misadventure, the coroner said that the cause of death was caffeine toxicity. Number 1. Smith Machine In May 2022, a 23-year-old paramedic named Dolores Dolo Boshert was tragically killed when gym equipment fell on her as she was exercising at a club fitness 25 miles or just about 40 kilometers northwest of St. Louis. Police said the freak accident happened around 2.50 a.m. No one else was in the gym at the time. It wasn't until 20 minutes after the incident that another gym goer showed up and discovered Dolo dead underneath the equipment. Sexy. They immediately attempted to render aid and called Sexy. 911. Police said Dolo was squatting on a Smith machine when they believed Ooh. she lost her balance. Word of God, homie said she was squatting on a Smith machine. What type of nasty shit is going on here? And her legs suddenly gave out and she was pinned under the heavy barbell. The Smith machine is a weight machine that consists of a barbell that is yep. fixed within steel rails, down allowing on only vertical movement. It's most commonly used to perform squats. There were no signs of foul play, and investigators labeled it as, quote, an unfortunate accident. Hey, look, hey, look, let's keep it real. I don't know too many men that wouldn't be a, a sniff machine for that. I'm, I'm not sniffing shit. Blast Massage D ain't never, not never been sniffing shit. Number 10, Beach Umbrella. <laughs> Most people go to the beach to relax and get away from the stresses of life. While it's pretty common for swimmers and surfers to drown or be attacked by sea life, you'd think sticking to the shore and sand would be safe, right? Well, not exactly. There's dangers around every corner. In August 2022, 63-year-old Tammy Peralt was killed on a South Carolina beach. The incident happened while she was out enjoying the day with some friends and Mike, her husband. It didn't seem to be too windy, maybe a little breezy according to Mike. But somehow, Tammy was struck by a runaway beach umbrella. Oh. It impaled her straight in the chest after a sudden gust of wind picked oh. it up. Oh. Witnesses say she was sitting in the wrong place at the wrong time. The umbrella went directly through Tammy's arm and pierced her rib cage. Damn, she bitch. was taken to the emergency room right after the incident. But after just one hour, Tammy was gone. Damn, Mike and Tammy bitch. were married for over 27 years and had recently ha -ha. been enjoying their retirement. Her loved ones say that she was passionately in love even after all that time together. <laughs> it's truly Yay! a sad situation. Number 9. Deadly Exchange ooh, ooh, In August 2022, a woman named Rachel Dollard was arrested not long after visiting her incarcerated romantic partner, Joshua Show Brown. Pussy, bitch. He was being held in Tennessee's Show Turner pussy, Center Industrial Complex for 11 years over drug charges. Ooh. Even though Joshua already had his time in court and received his sentence, it seems he didn't learn his lesson. During the lover's short visit, they shared a passionate kiss. Yep. At least, that's what it looked like to everyone else in the room. In reality, Rachel was transferring about half an ounce of meth inside her mouth. The kiss was just a ploy to pass it to Joshua. The drugs were contained inside a balloon pellet, and Josh swallowed the capsule in hopes of retrieving it later on from one end or the other. This masterful plan didn't exactly go how they hoped, though. Shortly after the exchange, Joshua was rushed to the hospital. While there, he passed away due to a drug overdose. Since she was the one who brought the meth into the correctional center and gave it to her partner, Rachel was charged with murder. Motherfucker! So, not only did Joshua lose his life over this stupid plot, his lover's life was also ruined forever. You Moral of the story is, don't do drugs, kids. And also, don't be stupid. Number 8. What? Sledding on a Mattress In 2008, 46-year-old David Monk and a few of his friends went to the Sal's Dual Resort in the Italian Alps to enjoy some time in the snow. They wanted to go sledding and picked out one of the biggest mountains. The 46-year-old British man thought it would be a good idea to use a foam crash barrier used as protection on a ski lift support as a makeshift sled. They basically used a mattress. 
The mattress quickly gained speed, and the men weren't able to control it. Sadly, they plowed into a safety net on their ride. David hit his head on a corner post and suffered severe damage, killing him almost instantly. Two of his friends were critically injured. Police found David and his group while out on a motor ski patrol. Paramedics attempted to resuscitate David, but were unable to bring him back. They determined that the men had likely spent the previous night out drinking, which explains why they thought sledding down a mountain on a piece of foam was a good idea. David left behind his wife Anne as well as two teenage sons. In an interview, Anne spoke about her deceased partner saying, he was a loving husband and father. He was such a kind man who loved his family very much. It seems that David's friends will make a recovery, but it's unlikely the man's loved ones will ever get over this loss. What's the craziest thing you've done in the snow? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 7. Timber Coconuts can be difficult to collect at times. They grow high up in trees and many people collect them by hand. Some even chop down the whole tree just to get the coveted fruit, which is exactly what happened on January 9th, 2022. In the Shambor village in India, a 37-year-old man whose name has been listed as Yatiraj was cutting down trees at a coconut farm. He accepted a contract from a local farmer, but unfortunately for him, this job ended in tragedy. While chopping down the trees, Yatiraj was accidentally struck by a falling trunk. The accident caused severe injuries all over the man's body. As soon as someone noticed what had happened, he was rushed to the nearest government hospital. But by the time he reached the facility in Bantwal, he was already long gone. The accident came only four months after Yatiraj was married. We're not sure if we'll ever be able to look at a coconut the same way after this. Number six, Leap of Faith. In order to go bungee jumping, you have to be a pretty brave individual. The simple yet terrifying act of stepping off a ledge and plunging down who knows how far leaves many people sick to their stomachs. Oh, hell yeah. To bungee jump safely, there's a lot of work involved. Trained professionals have to make sure proper safety checks are met. Equipment, usually reinforced cords held up by a crane, is in good shape and that there's no obstacles in the jumping path. Unfortunately, in 1997, a 22-year-old man thought he could go bungee jumping all by himself with simple bungee cords. Eric A. Barsha, who made a living working in the fast food industry, tied a few of the stretchy cords together to make a fairly long rope of sorts. He then took one of the ends and wrapped it around his foot while leaving the other anchored at the top of his jump site, a railroad trestle at Lake Akatink Park. The drop below him was about 70 feet. As you've probably gathered since he's on this list, Eric wasn't all too bright. He didn't have the proper gear to attempt this massive leap of faith, but he leaped anyway. Seconds after the jump, he hit the pavement. His Boom! body was discovered at about two in the morning. Game Investigators over. determined that Eric's makeshift bungee rope was longer than the distance from the ground to the railroad oh! truck. Incredibly, the cords didn't come loose and were still intact by the time Eric was found. It's possible that he could have survived the leap if he had taken better measurements. He probably still would have gotten hurt, but he might have made it out alive at least. Eric's family was shocked after hearing what he tried to do. His mom claimed that the young man was smart, so it was very surprising that he'd try something so stupid. Number five, That's Pig dumb. Dinner. In March 2015, 46-year-old Alexandru Pope was killed by a group of pigs. The farmer had gone to take care of the animals. His nephew, Andre Alexandru, said that he was going to quickly feed them and come back. But two hours passed, and there was still no sign of Alexandru. This caused his family members to worry, so they went out to check on him. What they discovered left them horrified. The man had fallen into the pig pen, and the animals had started to eat him. His relatives found Alexandru with a half-eaten face. They believed that he probably had a heart attack while getting the pig's food and accidentally fell into the enclosure. The man did have a history of heart problems. An autopsy did not support this claim, though. It's said that Alexandru passed away thanks to severe hemorrhaging, so it's likely he just slipped and fell. After this Damn. gruesome incident, the victim's family, who are from Romania, decided that the pigs involved should all be put down. It wouldn't be right to sell them to somebody else after what happened. Their bodies were all burned and not used for consumption. Bacon. Number 4. Man vs. Cobra Being afraid of snakes is reasonable. They're slippery, fast, and many of them carry lethal poison in their tiny the fangs. Most people have enough common sense to stay away from the reptiles. But as you know, not everyone is gifted with intelligence on this planet. 
Sadly, 28-year-old Wayne Roth came face to face with a snake in 1998 and did not come out victorious. After ingesting drugs and consuming copious amounts of alcohol, the Pennsylvania man was hanging out at a friend's house. This friend, Crotu, happened to own a six-foot-long giant cobra. It's unclear why he had such a dangerous animal, but it seems that the snake was his pet. While under the influence of several vices, Wayne decided it'd be a good idea to try and pick up the cobra. This didn't end well. The snake quickly snapped back and bit him. The combination of the venom and drugs in Wayne's system proved deadly. Strangely enough, after the initial bite, Wayne told his friend that he was fine and didn't need help. Instead, he suggested they go to the bar and get another drink. A few hours later, the side effects of the bite were growing obvious, so Crotu tried taking Wayne to the hospital. On the way there, he passed away. Number 3. Caked in Dirt An Iranian man who has been referred to simply as Omu Haji, which means elderly person, passed away in October 2022 after washing himself. The 94-year-old had reportedly not taken a bath or used soap to clean himself in over 60 years. What? People who knew him from his village told news outlets that a traumatic experience while he was younger resulted in this strange aversion to cleanliness. For decades, Omu lived caked in dirt. He'd often smoke animal feces in a pipe and ate raw from the street. He truly believed that being clean would make him sick. Another man from India named Kailash Singh believed something similar. Instead of taking a shower like most people, Kailash would instead take what he referred to as a fire bath. This involved Mother. lighting a fire, smoking marijuana, and praying. He said Mother. that the smoke and fire killed all the germs and bacteria off his body. Omu may have been right considering his quick passing right after bathing again. It's incredible that he lived so long that way. Maybe he was onto something. Mother. What do you think? What? Number 2. Michael Warner in 2004, 58-year-old Michael Warner died after a sherry enema. Enemas typically involve a liquid or gas being inserted through the rectum and being absorbed into the body. Some people enjoy them, but it's no. not exactly everybody's cup of tea. No. Michael's wife, Tammy, was apparently the one who helped him do the enema. Nasty. She claimed that her husband had a severe alcohol problem and would frequently do enemas with the substance. On the fatal night, Tammy helped Michael and gave him two large bottles of alcohol through the butt. The things we do for the people we love. Hell Sadly, no. this much sherry raised Michael's blood alcohol level up to 0.47, which is about six times over the legal limit. This outrageous amount resulted in the man's passing. After her husband's death, Tammy was accused of negligent homicide. Apparently, one month before the incident, she burnt Michael's will. In court, she denied all accusations and said that she was just trying to help her partner. The charges were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. Number 1. Too Many Carrots There's a popular saying that too much of a good thing is bad. This applies to practically everything. Relationships, money, work, and you know, the classic carrots. Yup, we said carrots. As kids, people are told to eat the orange veggies to improve eye function and generally stay healthy. Carrots contain lots of good vitamins and nutrients, but when eaten in abundance, they can have negative consequences on your health. In 1974, a British scientist named Basil Brown learned this lesson the hard way. At just 48 years old, Basil prided himself on being a healthy food enthusiast. He was extremely conscious about what was put inside his body, but after his death, an autopsy revealed that he was anything but the picture of health. The man had severe liver cirrhosis, and his skin shined a bright yellow color. If you're unfamiliar, cirrhosis of the liver is caused by many things. Some of the most common include cystic fibrosis and alcoholism. But in unique cases, it can be a result of too much vitamin A. And guess what contains a large amount of vitamin A? That's right, carrots. Medical professionals believe that Basil's strange complexion was likely due to eating too much beta-carotene. This condition is called keratinemia, it's pretty incredible when you think about just how many carrots Basil had to have been eating each day in order to develop such a severe reaction. You shouldn't be afraid of eating these veggies yourself just because of what happened to him. But be sure not to overindulge. Dumbest ways to die. Number 10. Using your phone while in the bathtub. What? Yes, people actually use electrical appliances while in the bath. In old movies, you'd often see a scene in which someone throws a radio into the bathtub to murder someone else with such a typical scene being a warning to people to keep electrical appliances far away from the tub. 
Fast forward to the digital age and people have died while using Twitter in the bath. That happened in Romania a few years what? ago. The media called it Twitter side. How do Another you person died quite recently in the US while using a cell phone in the bathtub while it was charging. It's too recent to go into details, but what we will tell you right now is this. Do not use your phone while you are in the bathtub. Okay, if it's not plugged in, it won't cause you any harm if you drop it into the water, but it's not a good habit to get into. Number 9. Eating Laundry Detergent What? You've all heard of the Tide Pod Challenge, wherein teens eat one of the small pods and video themselves doing it. Now this shouldn't lead to death, but you might be surprised. In 2018, just over a matter of weeks, the American Association of Poison Control Centers reported that 86 people called poison control after eating a Tide Pod. We cannot stress enough how dangerous this is to the health of individuals, said one report in an interview with Vice. It can lead to seizure, pulmonary edema, respiratory arrest, coma, and even death. The yeah, UK Telegraph bad. also reported in 2018 that eight deaths occurred in the US from 2012 to 2017 eight as deaths. a result of eating detergent pods. Oh. These deaths were mainly young kids and older people suffering from mental problems, Mother. but it shows you that this can seriously be a dumb way to die. Yeah, that's a dumb so way perhaps to die. the that's question not... we should be asking is why do they make them look so damn delicious? No, Number the, the eight, Tide Pod death don't, by Lego. don't look okay, delicious. So you know that standing on a piece of Lego can be excruciatingly painful. Science tells us it's up there with some of the world's worst pains. But you could do worse. You could choke on a piece of Lego. And yes, there are cases. Now, this usually happens to young kids, so we can't really blame them as they are too young to understand the danger. But then you've got deaths by pen caps, and these people who should know better have choked after thinking it was a good idea to have a nibble on it. What? If you do find yourself choking on something you shouldn't have put in your mouth, first try coughing hard, or you can push your thumb in the space below your ribs, or even try leaning over a chair, table, or railing, performing a kind of Heimlich maneuver on yourself. Number 7. Holding in poop what? Who hasn't just held on for that little bit longer so they didn't have to stop doing something and go to the bathroom? All of us. Oh. And sometimes you might not have a choice, such as when you are on a bus or sitting in a park on a summer's day with a girl or boy of oh your my dreams. God, the poop but is holding it in can be deadly, as a 16-year-old girl found out in 2013 in the UK. We don't want to worry you too much, though, as you'd have to hold it in for a very long time. One doctor, when interviewed, said, It's not uncommon to see young people in their teens or 20s come in and say they haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks. What? Okay, so death is unlikely, but just go to the toilet or get some help if you can't poop. Two weeks? Number six, pets that can kill you. Not too long ago, a British man was found dead in his room, and the culprit was his 8-foot-long python pet that he dearly loved. Aww. Apparently, they got along very well, but animals can always be unpredictable, so if one is having a bad day and it's powerful enough to kill you, well, maybe you should just get a hamster. Yeah. We can find instances of pet lizards killing their owners, or death by pet tiger, pet, pet bear, pet spider, and pet rat. Pet Even rat? dogs that have a predilection for violence and are big and strong enough have mauled their owners to death. A Shih Tzu might not ward off burglars or impress your tough buddies, but at least they won't eat you for dinner after a bad day. Number 5. The Amateur Parkour People who practice the discipline of parkour usually have just that, discipline. While it's always dangerous to some extent, the professionals are well trained. But it seems some people try it anyway, even without much training, or worse, when drunk. Yes, there are quite a few deaths of amateur parkour cases out there. It's mostly young folks trying to get hits on social media or YouTube, when the only meaningful hit they get is one to the head. Oh. We are not all created to be famous, so don't try and copy something highly skilled parkour professionals do. In short, don't be a jackass. Oh. Number four, squashed by a vending machine. Okay, so we've all been bugged at some point when what we paid for at the vending machine didn't come out. I hate that. What to do? I hate that. Tip the thing, of course. Even worse, when you use one of them claw machines like in Toy Story at an arcade and you get the toy like it's right in the claw and it come up and it go around the toy like it's not even strong enough to pull it. Bro, I, I hate that. I saw a guy fight one of those vending machines and lose. Broke his whole hand. Perhaps some of you burgeoning criminals have in the past thought it was a good idea to just tip it to see if you can get a freebie. Well, a study cited by The Guardian shows that this tipping of the vending machine has been for some people, mainly oh. males aged 15 to 25, the last thing they ever did. This dance of death has led to the fatalities of more people than you would believe. Number 3. Death by Baguette or Sausage You might remember from one of our other shows that hot dogs kill quite a lot of people urging one official to say they should come with a warning on them. In 2014, 77 people choked to death on hot dogs. But baguettes? Surely you couldn't choke on something that big. Well, we'll leave you with this opening sentence of an article that appeared in the British media a few years ago. 
an inquest heard how a Middlesbrough man choked and died after stuffing bread and pate into his mouth. Number 2. Laughing yourself to death. Yes, this actually happens, and there are notable what? cases throughout history. One of the more recent cases involved a man from the UK who laughed himself to death in 1975 after watching Kung Fu Capers, an episode of the TV series called The Goodies. Should I watch that episode? Like, should I? Apparently it was so funny that he laughed for 25 minutes, after which he fell onto the sofa and died of heart failure. <laughs> a similar thing happened to a Danish man in 1989, and the cause of his laughter was the movie A Fish Called Wanda. What? So, just be careful when you choose your comedies. Number 1. Pretending to be a superhero oh. In 2017, a woman died after a 34-foot fall at the World Trade Center Oculus. Oh. According to news reports, she had been pretending to be a superhero. Unfortunately, she wasn't the first and probably won't be the last. In 2014, a kid died in Indonesia after he thought he had the powers of Spider-Man. Yep. Another boy in China died after he thought he had the powers of Superman. Yep. He was only four, but should have known better. According to China Daily Mother in 2011, the boy jumped from the fourth floor with his arms outstretched like Superman and was followed a few minutes later by his four-year-old brother. The what? older brother survived the fall. Is this catching on? The USA has its real-life superhero in Phoenix Jones. In 2011, he had his nose broken and a gun put in his face while trying to protect some innocent bystanders. In 2015, the British press reported that some Scousers, another name for people from Liverpool, were posting videos on YouTube in which they were doing dangerous things while pretending to be Superman. Goes right the word the to the whip. wise, superheroes aren't real and pretending to be them might get you killed. 13. The irony of dying while keeping fit. We'll give you just one famous example of a victim of irony, and that is the case of the former American jogging guru Jim Fix. He wrote The Complete Book of Running in 1977, and it became a bestseller. In fact, he's said to be one of the main people that started what was called America's Fitness Revolution. Fix had once been overweight and also a heavy smoker, but then he started his exercise regime, sold his books, and told the American people that running was the secret to having a long life and good health. He died of a heart attack while running when he was just 52 years old. Okay, so that's perhaps not so strange, and we'll get stranger, but we just wanted to give you an example of death by irony. I mean, it could be Twelve, worse. Death by clothing. death by clothing. You've all heard news media write stories about what it calls draconian laws or rules. This just usually means out-of-date laws or laws that seem way too strict or even brutal. We get this adjective from a Greek lawmaker called Draco. In Athens in the 7th century BC, this man created laws that were said to be unfair or at least unfair if you were not part of the wealthy group of people. His harsh legal code could mean cruel punishments for even petty crimes. Nonetheless, it said he was popular at the time with the crowds. Just but in those days, the public did seem to enjoy watching blood being spilled. It said during one appearance in the Egenetan Theater, the crowd wanted to show their adoration, so they threw their hats, cloaks, and shirts at him. But they went overboard, and it said Draco suffocated under the avalanche of clothing from his admirers. What? You should say that this is an old story passed down, so one might question how it actually happened. Maybe they meant to kill him, but we'll never know what happened that fateful day. Close? 11. Death by proving that something is safe. Oh. You may have heard about this one as it's popped up in various TV series from time to time. The story is of a Canadian lawyer called Gary Hoy. On July 9th, 1993, he was taking people on a tour of the Toronto Dominion Centre, a building of many floors with a lot of glass windows. He wanted to demonstrate to the people just how strong the windows were, as rightly some folks were concerned about such a high glass fronted building. Building. To do this, he did something he'd done before and threw himself at a glass window to show that the glass was very strong. He was right that the glass didn't smash, but on this occasion, the window popped out of its frame and Hoy fell a long way to his death. An engineer later told the Canadian media, I don't know of any building code in the world that would allow a 160-pound man to run up against the glass and withstand it. That might have been some shock for the bystanders. Mm -hmm. 10. Same but different. This is another story of a lawyer trying to prove a point to people and in doing so, killed himself. The man was an American lawyer called Clement Vallandigham, and in 1871 he was representing a client that was accused of murder. Yeah, murder. The lawyer was trying to prove that the victim wasn't murdered but had accidentally killed himself. He tried to show how this might have happened and accidentally shot himself. He died, but his clients got off the murder charge. 9. Aww. Death by Beard 
A tourism website in Austria tells us that people can visit the epitaph of a man called Hans Steininger. He was a mayor of Braunau in the 16th century and was well known for having a really long beard. Brownow. We are told it was so long that if not tied, it would trail on the floor. One day, the poor guy was walking down the street and he tripped on his own beard, broke his neck, and died. To this day, his beard is kept in the local museum. Damn, 8. Death bitch. by Banana Slipping banana? on a banana skin is perhaps the was this Mario Kart? best known gag joke. And of course, it doesn't happen very often. But searching online, we can find one death certificate from 1927 that did indeed blame a banana skin for the death of a man. The 74-year-old slipped and died in Tennessee. 7. Mother death by piano. Mother if people do actually die from slipping on banana skins, do they also die by a piano falling on their heads? Well, someone actually investigated this, and that writer found at least one incident when a piano being pulled up a building had come crashing down on a person below. The website Straight Dope writes, In 1931, a piano was being hoisted up to a second-story window when a cornice broke free from the building, falling and killing a mover below. But That's a Looney Tunes-ass way to die, bro. Looney Tunes ass way to die. But perhaps the most famous piano Ooh, death out naked. there was that of a strip club bouncer called Jimmy yeah. Ferrozo. In 1983, at a club in San Francisco, he and his girlfriend had been making love on a piano that was connected to a hoist so it could be lowered down for performances and raised when it wasn't being used. Ooh. This time, the piano was down on the floor, but during the act of passion, one of the two accidentally hit the switch and the piano was pulled up. Jimmy was consequently crushed against the ceiling, but we are told his lover survived the incident. 6. Killed by a bird what? We can actually find a few instances of people being killed by birds. Stabbed to death by a bird? Birds have knives now? Birds are carrying weapons? What type of shit? But this one has to be the strangest. It also involves a fair bit of karma. In 2011, a 35-year-old California resident called Jose Luis Ochoa was stabbed to death by a bird. The BBC writes that the man had been at an illegal cockfight and had taken with him a cock that had sharp spurs on its legs, which were more like little knives. The bird apparently turned on its owner and he suffered what the coroner called a sharp force injury. A police spokesperson told the media, I have never seen this type of an incident. No kidding. 5. Killing your son, the snake. What? In 2013, a Japanese man called Takuya Nagaya had apparently been acting a bit weird at his parents' apartment in Okazaki City. He'd been slithering around like a snake. Of course, his father came to the rational conclusion that his son had been possessed by some kind of snake demon. He then did the next rational thing and took matters into his own oh. hands. Well, we should say head and teeth. Reports tell us his son died from injuries sustained while the father was trying to get the snake out of him by biting and headbutting him. What? You can only imagine what the scene must have looked like. 4. A cow through the roof The BBC oh, reported no. in 2013 that a Brazilian man was killed in his bed when a cow came crashing down through his roof. Somehow, the rather large animal got into his asbestos roof and fell right through it. Apparently, this wasn't the first time a cow had fallen through a roof in this rural area. The 45-year-old died from internal bleeding. 3. Death by slug Many of us might have done some silly things just because we were dared to do it or we wanted to win some money or just show off. This goes wrong all the time, and you can find endless video clips of Darwin Award types of stunts online. In November 2018, the world's media reported the death of an Australian man called Sam Ballard, who had died aged 28. Eight years prior to his death, the skilled rugby player had been at a party with friends in Sydney. No, no doubt quite a bit of alcohol had been consumed, and during the party, a slug turned up on the scene. Ballard's friends, writes The Independent, dared him to eat the slug. That he did, but as a result, he became very sick. He was taken to a hospital, and it was found later that he had been infected by a parasite known as rat lungworm. This ended up paralyzing the young man and was the reason he died some years later. 2. Death by Cockroach You shouldn't eat slugs, and you also probably shouldn't eat cockroaches. That's the real. BBC tells us that in 2012, a man from Florida by the name of Edward Archbold had entered himself into a live cockroach-eating competition. He had done well, devouring dozens of the creatures, but it also killed him. The coroner ruled that his death was caused by asphyxia due to choking and aspiration of gastric contents. In short, he had choked on cockroach body parts. 1. Hey. The Body of Christ 
We know that some Christians will take into their mouths something that symbolizes the body of Christ. But one Canadian man took this a step further in 1987. According to the Toronto Globe and Mail, a man called Franco Brun had been taken in by police and left in the cells. It turns out that in the cell, the man had made use of a small Gideon's Bible by swallowing it. He choked to death on it. News reports tell us that for this mentally unwell man, the swallowing of the Bible to him was some form of symbolism or allegory, as though he was trying to purge himself of the devil by consuming religion. Motherfucker. Number 8. Don't get friendly with some wild animals. Some people in this world of ours have mistakenly thought that wild animals are not actually that wild, and so they've gotten up close to what we might call natural-born killers in the animal kingdom. Arguably the most famous case was that of a guy named Timothy Treadwell. If you haven't seen the movie about his exploits called Grizzly Man, we suggest you do at some point. Treadwell spent many of his summers in Alaska living among grizzly bears, animals that can rip a person's face off with one swipe. These animals are certainly fluffy and cute, but they are not the kinds of things we suggest you treat like a teddy bear. Treadwell was actually cautious with the bears, but he also got up close to them, too close. After 13 summers with the bears, parts of his clothing were found inside the stomach of a 28-year-old grizzly. His girlfriend was also eaten. So, yes, you have to be careful when you're around wild animals. It Aww. should be obvious, but it obviously isn't obvious to some people. There are a few recent cases of people being killed by wild animals. We don't mean to make fun of these people since their families are still grieving for them. But if we don't say anything, then we won't get the message across that you should not get up close to these certain beasts. In 2018, a man in India decided he wanted a selfie with a bear. It didn't end well, since the apex predator mauled him to death. Maybe you think that's unusual, but quite a few people have taken mortal selfies with wild animals. In fact, the BBC reported in 2018 that there had been a spate of deaths in India because people thought they could take selfies with elephants. Our advice is don't do it, it's not worth the likes on social media. In 2016 in China, a man thought it'd be a good idea to get up close to a walrus at a wildlife park and take a selfie. The walrus wasn't playing around though and pulled the man into the water and killed him. A zookeeper also died while trying to help the man. In 2015, officials at Yellowstone National Park had to issue a stark warning to all visitors. That was, please stop trying to take selfies with bison. Yep, there had been lots of cases of people doing this. And while no one died, some people suffered very serious injuries after being tossed around like a doll. It's like this, some folks hit flies away with their hands. They don't like flies. Well, some animals don't much like humans being around them. Some of them even want to eat you. Unfortunately, it gets worse than this, as you'll now see. Number 7. The gun just went off. If you search online for people who accidentally shot and killed themselves, you'll find that it happens quite often. Guns are not toys, and that's why they have safety mechanisms. There are too many cases of this happening to mention, and a lot of them happened in recent months and years in the USA. We found another case of a partygoer dying when messing with a gun. This happened in India in 2018. Three guys were drinking when one man started showing off his pistol. The gun accidentally went off and the man died. It was reported in some Indian media that the guy was actually playing the game Russian Roulette. He lost. That's not if you don't know what that game is, it's putting one bullet in a chamber of a revolver, then spinning the chamber, and then you put the gun to your head and pull the trigger, hoping that the bullet isn't the one in the chamber. You'd think someone would have to be crazy to play that game. But if you look online, you'll find plenty of people who have died this way. Some cases are quite recent and happened in the USA. In Thailand in 2017, a man played this game with his wife. That was a very bad move because he ended up killing her. Be careful what you shoot at, too. In 1982, some guys in Arizona thought it'd be fun to shoot at a massive saguaro cacti. One of the men shot at a 26-foot tall cactus and a bit broke off. It landed on him and crushed him to death. Oh. The moral of the story is never ever play oh. with guns. Don't become a statistic. Don't end up being talked about on the infographic Not show. The next dumb way to die is arguably even a bigger killer around the world. Number 6. Death by Mushroom Mushrooms grow everywhere, and some of the edible ones sometimes look a bit like the poisonous ones. You wouldn't believe how many people just pick up some wild mushrooms, go home, eat them, and die. There are so many cases, and it seems most mushroom deaths happen in Asia, but not all. In 2019, one French woman died and three others were hospitalized after they had picked up some wild mushrooms they believed to be porcini mushrooms. They weren't. They were a mushroom known as a death cap, which doesn't sound like something you should eat. Sounds like some out of a Super Mario video game on Super Nintendo. The lesson here is you should never pick your own mushrooms unless you are a mushroom expert. 
There are lots of deadly mushrooms in this world of ours. These things have actually killed families and have injured or killed many people living in small communities. In 2014, 14 people in North Carolina became severely ill after eating mushrooms they had foraged. No one died, but they almost did. Three of the people needed liver transplants. We found other cases in the 90s where people died in California after picking mushrooms they thought they could eat. The mushrooms again were the death caps. Death caps look like something you could eat, but they also look a bit like magic mushrooms, the hallucinogenic mushroom. Not too long ago, four men in the US became seriously ill after eating death caps. They thought they were going to get high and talk about the meaning of existence. Instead, they suffered severe liver damage. Okay, now to the realm of violent deaths again. This is not how you want to go. Number 5. Be careful where you swim. It's not really a dumb way to die if you just swim and something decides to eat you. But it's quite dumb if you've seen all the don't swim signs that tell you the water is full of massive crocodiles. Oh. It's happened in Australia in recent years, Word. with one case involving a young man ignoring the signs and taking a dip. That swim ended up with the man being partly eaten by a croc. It's happened in the ocean, where massive saltwater crocodiles have taken people's lives, but it's also happened in rivers. There's a stretch of water in Australia called East Alligator River. Hmm, would you want to enter that river? No. Well, the authorities in recent years have been saying people know very well that they should not go in the water, but they do it as a kind of dare. Some parts of this river you can wade across, and there's a notorious crocodile hotspot called Cahill's Crossing. One guy tried to cross in 2017 and he didn't get very far. Mm. A croc took him and killed him. When he was taken, he was only standing in ankle-deep water. Damn. You should always do what those signs tell you. We're not even going to mention how many drownings there are when people swim in the ocean, when signs say don't because of the conditions. Just do what you're told, that's our advice. The next one probably kills more people than anything on this list. Number 4. Treating Cuts We'll make this one short. Our advice is if you cut yourself and you have an open wound, then get it treated. Don't just ignore it because the cut might become infected. You know what? Scores of people don't treat their wounds and later they die from infection. In the 17th century, there was a famous case and involved a composer named Jean-Baptiste Lully. This guy loved dancing, and one particular dance he enjoyed involved banging a staff on the floor. One day he missed the floor, and he hit his foot. This caused a pretty serious wound, and it led to an infection. Lully was told at the time that this infection could kill him, and his leg would have to be amputated. The man said, no, if I lose that leg I won't be able to dance anymore. He died soon after. Now for something we might call completely disgusting. Number 3. Overeating Yup, some people just eat too much in one sitting and die. There's an old Monty Python movie that features a man in a restaurant that eats until he explodes. And while that won't happen, people can die from consuming massive meals. It happened in the 18th century to Adolf Frederick, the king of Sweden, aka the man who ate himself to death. In one meal, he ate lots of his beloved lobster, dishes of caviar, some sauerkraut, some smoked herring, and he washed that all down with lots of champagne. After that, he had a whopping 14 servings of semla served with a bowl of hot milk. Semla is like cream bun. The meal was in fact not far from what the guy ordered in the Monty Python movie. The king didn't explode, but he couldn't digest that much food and he died. You can die of a reputed stomach, something you might have seen in the movie called Seven. The Lancet reported a case in the 1980s of a slim London-based model dying because she ate too much. That publication said she had consumed a half pound of steak, one pound of liver, two pounds of kidney, two eggs, one cauliflower, ten peaches, four pears, four bananas, two apples, two glasses of milk, two slices of bread, and two pounds each of grapes, plums, and carrots. Damn, it was bitch. just too much and her stomach ruptured, which means to burst. Death by eating too much has happened at eating competitions too. A man in California recently died while taking part in a taco eating contest. The guy who watched the contest and saw this man eat said it was like he'd never eaten before. He was just shoving the tacos down his mouth without chewing. The guy collapsed during the contest. It's thought he choked to death. Did there are win? scores of stories of people dying after eating too much. Look online and you'll find them. One particular guy might have seen the movie Cool Hand Luke because in that movie Luke eats 40 boiled eggs for a bet. This happened in India and it involved two men. One guy bet his friend that he couldn't eat 50 raw eggs in one sitting. The man got to 41 and died. Doctors said his death was simply caused by overeating. The next on this list is the most surprising and disturbing. Too much of a good thing can kill you, and that good thing could be a certain vitamin. Yes, consuming too many vitamins can be fatal. There's a famous case of a bunch of explorers that had a terrible time on an Australasian Antarctic expedition. Two men died after falling into a crevasse and two other guys got lost. They survived by eating the dogs they had with them. The men got back to the base camp, but they both fell very ill and one of them died. 
First, he became terribly sick, his hair fell out, his skin peeled off, he became delirious, and then he died. Doctors now say those symptoms were in line with vitamin A overdose. The vitamins apparently came from the dog's livers. Those guys didn't have many options, but some people choose to get too many vitamins down them. In 1974, a health advocate in London decided to consume 70 million units of vitamin A in around 10 gallons of carrot juice over a period of 10 days. His skin turned yellow and he died. When you consume too many vitamins, you can suffer from something called hypervitaminosis. This can be deadly, and you can find instances of when it happened. You might get kidney damage and survive, but you might also give up the ghost. It happened to a 10-year-old boy in India in 2016. He was prescribed vitamin D supplements, but it was just too much and he overdosed. We found more recent cases in the US when people died after consuming too much vitamin D. In some cases, it's the doctors who are dumb, not the consumers. But we don't want to scare you from getting your essential vitamins, just don't go crazy. And for this last one, you're going to see that many young folk die every year from doing one stupid thing. Number 1. Deadly Deodorant Okay, so we all want to smell good, but you should know that people have died from using too much deodorant. These are sad stories since the victims probably had an issue with how they smelled or what some people had said to them about their body odor, but they really shouldn't have gone crazy with the spray. In the 90s, a UK teenager died after spraying himself with deodorant all the time. It wasn't the fact that the stuff killed him by getting in his skin, but the fact that he sprayed it too often in a confined space. He died because over time he just inhaled too much spray. The autopsy showed 0.37 mg of butane per liter was in his blood. A level of 0.1 mg per liter can kill you. It happened another time not that long ago in the UK. A young man was obsessed with his smell and he used deodorant all the time. In fact, an investigation found he had 45 cans of the stuff in his room. He inhaled too much and died. His mother later said he would not take showers but would stand there with deodorant what? and spray half of the can on him. You can actually find lots of deodorant deaths that happened in the UK and the US over the last few years. It's what happened to both of? boys and girls. We won't mention them all because there are way too many. What we will say is that you should know this can happen. We don't mean to make fun of those people, we want you to know the dangers. That's why those sprays usually come with the warning, use in well-ventilated places. Let's be honest. What's messed up is I actually know people who won't bathe, but also won't use the deodorant either. Florida man down. Back in June 2022, over in Largo, Florida, a couple of people were enjoying a round of frisbee golf in a local park. Mm. What, you don't know the time-honored game of frisbee golf? No. As the name suggests, it's like golf, but instead of a ball, you have a frisbee, and instead of holes, you have these basket things. A more weirdly American sport has never existed, and I've been to a hot dog eating contest. Anyways, the game was progressing pretty normally when someone accidentally flung their frisbee off course into a nearby lake. Now, Florida is famously home to some 1.25 million alligators. And because of this, almost every body of fresh water across the state has signs warning people not to step foot in the water, lest they fancy becoming an alligator snack. Despite this, a gentleman who we'll call Florida Man decided in his infinite wisdom to wade right on in and grab the disc. No. Gators be damned. This was not his first time in the waters, though. He'd repeatedly waded into this lake in the past to fetch lost frisbees and resell them back to their owners, despite being warned not to do so multiple times. But this would be the last time he got to pull this ploy, because before he could find the frisbee, an alligator found him. Well, all I can say is if you play stupid games, like fetching frisbees from alligator-infested waters, yeah. you win stupid prizes. Yep. <laughs> like being eaten by alligators. Superior Idiot Energy Back in August 2021, a gentleman from Southampton in the UK decided he wanted to try out paddleboarding for the first time. He'd carefully researched all the equipment he needed, bought a few boards and paddles for himself and his family, and then headed to a beach in Hampshire. He'd specifically chosen this beach because he knew the waters would be calmer, giving him a better chance to get to grips with the board. All seems like a very sensible, logical way to go about things, doesn't it? That is, until you learn that this guy couldn't swim. Also, he hadn't bothered to put on a life jacket. And then, to add the cherry on top of this idiot Sunday, he'd paddled more than half a mile out into open water, where when he tried to turn the board around, he suddenly fell off. 
Unable to get a grip on the board, his inability to swim, and the lack of a body affixed flotation device ended up causing his demise. To make matters worse, his wife claimed that the lack of coast guards on the beach was the main reason he didn't survive. While that may be a part of it, I'm pretty sure a fatal lack of common sense was more to blame here. Hot Stuff I love me a good barbecue. Ooh, love barbecue. The only part I don't enjoy is waiting for the coals to be hot enough to cook on. Love yeah, I know, love it only burger. takes like 15 minutes to light them up and get them scorching hot, but True this that. little fatty wants his burger now. That I is want he... it now! Well, and it turns that out is... I'm not the only impatient one. Back in July 2022, a man from Erfstadt, Germany was driving along when all of a sudden he lost consciousness. His car came to a stop when it hit the side of a house and the local fire brigade was called. They assumed this guy had fallen asleep at the wheel and caused the accident, but when they got there, the unmistakable smell of charcoal filled their noses. And when they opened the back doors of the car, out fell several small barbecue grills with glowing coals still what? in them. After extinguishing the coals, the oh. firefighters found beer, speakers, beer benches, and crockery inside. This nigga was having a mobile barbecue slash picnic kickback and he was the only one invited, what? It turned out the idiot driving was a cook who supposedly gave barbecue seminars. Apparently in a rush to get from one appointment to the next, he hadn't bothered to extinguish the still glowing coals in the kettle grills, which he loaded into the back of his car. Now, when they're burning, coals release a colorless and odorless toxic gas called carbon, carbon monoxide, monoxide, even Ooh. when they're not smoking which Damn. is why having a cool barbecue in an enclosed space is always a bad idea. After a while, this guy's car had filled up with the toxic gas, causing him to pass out and crash. Clearly, his barbecue course didn't cover the basics of barbecue safety. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> Caffeine. In the big buff world of gym bros, taking a pre-workout supplement is currently all the rage. A single serving contains everything you need to boost your energy levels and get your buzz on, including vitamins, carbohydrates, and around 175 milligrams of the stimulant caffeine, about the same amount you'd find in four cups of coffee. Now Damn. that's liquid motivation. However, these supplements can be expensive, so some people resort to just buying caffeine powder and making their own liquid get up and go juice. At least that's what one man in the UK tried to do back in 2022. He'd bought some caffeine powder to add to his homemade pre-workout drink, and because it hadn't come with a measuring cup or scoop, he decided to use some basic kitchen scales to measure out 300 milligrams of the stuff. That's about six and a half very strong coffees. Definitely not advised, though not necessarily a fatal dose. But uh, the scales he was using weren't in milligrams. They were in grams. The lowest weight he could measure on them was more than six times the maximum recommended dose. And it's believed without realizing the metrics were wrong, he measured out close to 300 grams, more than 200 coffees worth of caffeine, and consumed it. Within minutes, he was on the floor in the grips of a severe caffeine overdose, one he didn't survive. Now, the caffeine levels in the blood of a person who drank one cup of coffee would be two to four milligrams per liter of blood. A post-mortem revealed that this guy's caffeine levels were 392 milligrams per liter. So this one goes out to all the gym lovers out there. Double, triple, quadruple check your supplement metrics. Damn. Or be like me and stick to having a pre-workout coffee on the couch. And then staying there, much safer. Much safer. Poor life choo choo choices. No. It's no, not just consuming no. self made workout energy drinks that'll earn you a Darwin Award, though. Advertising them can result in an equally dumb demise, if this next entrant is anything to go by. Back in January 2015, a male fitness model in Burbank, California decided he wanted to shoot a promotional video for an energy drink company he'd co founded. But instead of shooting something like a big burly guy in a gym lifting weights with one hand and chugging his energy drink with another, our man wanted something different. He wanted to really train. No, sorry, I read that wrong. He wanted real trains. He planned to make it look like drinking this drink would give you the power to outrace a literal train. The only problem is that a shoot like this is expensive and requires a lot of paperwork. 
But going for a more brawn over brain approach, our man figured he and his team could just trespass onto a restricted area of the Metrolink tracks and shoot the commercial hassle-free. His plan was to run on a set of tracks that were parallel to the trains coming up behind him, so shot from the side it would only look like he was running ahead of the train. But here's the kicker. This particular section of railway was on a blind bend, so until the train was around the corner, there was no way of knowing which set of tracks it would be using. Nevertheless, our model man shouted action and started running, with the train quickly catching up behind him. Despite the blaring sound of the train's horn, our man just kept running in a straight line until the train ran over him. Would this be a bad time to mention that semi-realistic CGI effects are pretty cheap these days? Like, I know a guy who'll edit you into a train chase scene for like 20 bucks. No, sorry. I was too busy over here flexing my brain, not my muscles. Protein powder problems. What, another Jimbro workout supplement related story? Don't mind if I do. Back in February 2022, early in the morning, a young man was driving along a road on the outskirts of San Diego. Without warning, he veered off to the side of the road, hitting a parked vehicle and causing a six-car pileup. Dang. Okay, at this point, I want you to take a guess at why he veered off the road. Was he looking at his phone? Had he fallen asleep? Was he attempting to open a packet of protein powder, take out a scoop and pour it into a cup of water he had in his lap while mixing it with a knife? Well, if you guessed that last one, give yourself a cookie. When rescuers arrived at the scene, they opened the guy's door to find protein powder all over the vehicle. It coated the seats, the dash, the airbag that had deployed after he crashed, and the knife, which, as he'd been distractedly using it to mix the protein drink in his lap, had been propelled back by the airbag and into his body. Fatally. Luckily, no one else was injured. Okay, several takeaways from this story. One, don't mix your protein powder while you drive. Two, don't hold a knife while you drive. And three, always take your workout supplements with a liberal dose of common sense. TikTok Trouble A lot of good things have come from the video sharing app TikTok, such as fun dances and wholesome viral stars. But it's also provided the catalyst for a lot of incredibly dumb trends, just for likes and views. Often, the more extreme these are, the more views they receive but they can be so pointlessly dangerous, many of them have been banned from the platform. But back in November 2022, one wannabe TikTok creator went viral for all the wrong reasons. Deciding he needed to add a little edge to his next TikTok dance, a man from Texas, in all his infinite wisdom, decided to get up on top of an 18-wheeler and then began to record himself dancing while the truck was moving. The driver of the truck had no idea and so he continued on his route as per usual. This included driving across Houston's US 59 East X Freeway, a route with several overpasses. Other drivers soon noticed the TikTok terror, watching as he ducked down to avoid being hit by some of the overpasses. But he was too focused on his dance moves and didn't spot one coming up at speed. He was promptly knocked off the top of the truck and into moving traffic, which obviously he didn't survive. I want to say this was an accident, but part of me wonders if he started the video like, Do I want a award achievement check? Lord have mercy on this idiot. There are a lot of people out there who claim to be the reincarnation of the big JC, Jesus Christ, but none have ever definitively proved that they are, which is what one pastor from Zambia was about to change. Back in 2021, this guy promised to prove to his congregation that he was the reincarnation of the Son of God by recreating one of Jesus' famous heavenly abilities. You assume he'd choose something with minimal risk, like turning water into wine or walking on water. No, of course not. He demanded his congregation bury him alive and then dig him up three days later, mimicking JC's famous resurrection. So as instructed, the church members dug him a grave, tied his hands together, and buried him. He remained there, as the good book said, for three days. And when he was exhumed on the third day, something unbelievable happened. He was alive. He'd done it. He'd really done it. He is risen! He obviously didn't do this. The pastor did not, in fact, survive three days buried in six feet of earth with no air. Not exactly a surprise and was very much stuck in the pre-resurrection stage. 
His congregation members were arrested, with several still on the run for their hand in this prophetical failing. If only he'd stuck to not turning water into wine. Copter Chaos When it comes to big, dangerous machines with the power to tear people to shreds, very few people immediately think of helicopters. Well, if at least one more of them had, then they might still be with us. Back in July 2022, news outlets all over the world began reporting on a story from Athens, Greece, where a tourist was struck down by a helicopter rotor after getting too close to the blades while trying to take a selfie with the vehicle. The news outlets quickly ran with the sensational story, but it turned out that they were wrong about one key thing, and the real story was far more baffling. The tourist in question had been riding as part of a group on the helicopter and, after it landed, had disembarked with the others and was chaperoned to a nearby lounge safely. However, it was at this point the tourist, who appeared to be calling someone on his phone, left the lounge and made a sudden beeline back to the helicopter, without telling anyone anything. As he approached the still-running vehicle, ground staff suddenly clocked him, shouting for him to stop. But over the noise of the helicopter, he couldn't hear them, nor could he see how fast the rear rotor was spinning. The pilot, who was wearing headphones, only heard the ground crew shouting right as the tourist made the unthinkable decision to duck under the tail section of the aircraft, but misjudged how close he was to the whirring blades and was fatally caught by the tail rotor. So it wasn't down to a seriously stupid selfie. But what the heck possessed him to go back to the helicopter, let alone duck under the tail and get that close to the blades? Maybe he'd forgotten something on the helicopter. Maybe he wanted to see the helicopter from the other side? Maybe. I don't know. I'm out of ideas. What do you think he was doing? Let me know down in the comments below. It's all bad. Gee whiz. Manual labor is no easy profession. It's a lot of long hours where you're constantly on your feet, often at the mercy of the elements. It ain't for the faint-hearted or the smooth-brained, considering how many dangers you can find on an active site. Which is why this next guy's employment in the field shorted out, shall we say. Back in 2020 in Dehradun, India, a laborer for the Uttarakhand Power Corporation decided to take a leak. Because he was on the job, he figured he shouldn't go far, and so found a pole to relieve himself next to. But this guy must have forgotten where he was and that he was working for a power company because he chose a pole that was right next to an electrical box. As soon as he let the stream rip onto the box, a fatal bolt of electricity surged up it and through his body, frying him instantly. Well, whether you work for a power company or not, I think we can all agree that we're going to be checking where we whiz before we whiz from now on. Yeah. Falling on hard times. When you're doing something as dangerous as canyoneering, the activity of exploring canyons, and California's aptly named Death Valley, having the right equipment isn't just advised. It's crucial. Otherwise, you might end up like this next guy. Back in December 2022, having planned a solo canyoneering trip, our man went by himself to rappel down one of Death Valley's many canyons when he suddenly realized his rope was too short. Instead of admitting defeat and heading out of the park to find somewhere that might sell him a longer rope, he had a big brain moment. He could use a piece of webbing to lengthen his rope and make it down to the bottom. Now, webbing is a sort of strap often used to secure things like backpacks. It's not designed to be used as climbing equipment. Nonetheless, he extended the makeshift rope and, happy with it, began his descent. However, when he reached the knot where the rope met the webbing, he had to briefly disconnect his rappel device in order to get over it. And it was here, while he wasn't secured to the wall or the rope thanks to his own harebrained design, that he suddenly fell 30 feet to his demise. At least now we all know how not to go canyoneering. Get it? Not? Like, like the not he, uh... Yeah, the dad jokes aren't going to get any better. They're the most stable part of my personality. Deal with it. Pour one out. Alcohol has a few properties that it's famous for. For one, it's a depressant, meaning it inhibits or depresses the response of the central nervous system, which is why you slur your speech and can't walk straight when you've had one too many. Two, at room temperature, it's liquid in form. And three, it's highly flammable. Now that last one is particularly important because people don't seem to understand just how dangerous that makes it near an open flame if not handled correctly. 
For example, back in July 2022, a man from Naples, Italy was having a barbecue when he decided to add a little fuel to the fire. Did he use fire lights? Maybe a little extra paper or wood? Nope, this guy decided to pour alcohol on the flames. Here's a little science lesson for you kids. When a high enough proof alcohol in a stream meets a flame, it doesn't magically make the source of the fire any hotter. It sets the stream of alcohol on fire. In an instant, fire had traveled up the stream of alcohol to the bottle it was being poured from, and the whole thing blew up in his face. The injuries- I've had that happen to me. Yup, I was uh, setting bugs on fire when I was a kid, and I poured this whole entire thing of alcohol into like this big old country crock cooking pan, put a whole bunch of paper and bugs in there, set it on fire, poured the alcohol onto the fire. The alcohol traveled up the bottle and blew up in my hand. Didn't blow me up though, luckily. He sustained were so severe, he didn't survive. But luckily, I like my tales of fatal idiocy. Well done. The Jägermeister. Jägermeister is an herbal liqueur which, thanks to the 56 herbs and spices that go into making it, give it something of an acquired taste. And by that, I mean, I only like it when it's mixed with Red Bull. I'm just classy like that. Still, at 35% alcohol by volume, it's pretty potent regardless. Well, over in a liquor parlor in South Africa, they decided to put the drink's potency to the test. They set up a drinking competition offering a prize of 200 rand, a little over $11, to anyone who could drink an entire 24-ounce bottle of the stuff. It's unclear whether they thought anyone would actually be dumb enough to attempt the challenge or whether they assumed it just couldn't be done, but several men stood up to the plate. And not only did the winner down every last drop, he also did so in less than two minutes. He was awarded his 200 rand prize when all of a sudden, he collapsed on the floor. But he wasn't just drunk or asleep, he was gone. Yeah, here's something I assumed I didn't need to explain, Alcohol isn't good for you in massive quantities. It's a toxin which can build up in the blood and literally poison you. In general, your body can process about one unit of alcohol per hour. After one drink, your blood will have an alcohol content of roughly 0.04%. After six drinks, that'd be around 0.14%. At this point, vomiting is not uncommon. After 15 drinks with a blood alcohol level of 0.3%, unconsciousness is inevitable. But after consuming an entire bottle of Jägermeister in just two minutes, our man's blood alcohol content would have shot up from 0% to around 0.44%, a fatal dose. Oh man, I can almost hear the frat boys saying he could have walked it off if only he'd had a couple of Red Bulls to chase it with. Honorable Mentions Okay, so there have been some pretty solid attempts to join the prestigious list of Darwin Award winners over the years, but the idiots in question have tragically survived. However, I'm feeling generous, so to make sure they don't feel left out, here are a couple of honorable mentions to those who almost made the list with some certifiably moronic life choices. To start, we head over to Russia, where back in 2020, an influencer decided to make their birthday a memorable one by inviting some of their friends over to a pool complex they'd hired out. They spent a little time in the sauna, and to ensure the water was extra cold for their post-sauna swim, the influencer had ordered 55 pounds of dry ice, which they then dumped into the pool. Okay, pop quiz, do you guys know what dry ice actually is? No? Well, neither did the influencer. Oh my god, yeah, that's not good. That's all the way bad. All they knew was that it was very cold, and when it met water, it produced a cool steam show effect, which would look great on their socials. But here's the thing. Dry ice is the solid form of carbon dioxide, which only stays solid at a temperature of negative 109.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Above this and without the right pressure conditions, it transitions straight into gas without an immediate liquid stage. So dumping that much in a pool, which was not a well-ventilated space, released a lot of carbon dioxide, a gas humans famously cannot breathe. Several guests dived in and immediately began to choke. The influencer themselves and a few others managed to get out just in time, but three guests suffocated, including the influencer's own husband. Well, that's a birthday they'll certainly never forget. Although that's not the dumbest thing someone's done around a body of water. Back in July 2022, the chief minister of a North Indian state visited the Holy Kalibine Rivulet, marking 22 years of its cleansing. 
Despite its historical significance, the rivulet had once been a sewer drain. But more than 20 years of community rejuvenation brought the rivulet back to life. On the heels of a clean water campaign in the state, the chief minister was so keen to prove to everyone at this event that the Colubine was both clean and safe, he grabbed himself a glass of its water and drank it down. I really hope I don't need to tell you, but just because fresh water looks clean doesn't mean it's safe to drink. Waterborne infections like E. coli, parasites, and raw sewage can contaminate even the freshest looking water sources, which this chief minister found out quickly. The next day, multiple media outlets reported that he was airlifted to a hospital with severe stomach cramps. He attempted to deny it, claiming it was a routine checkup, though I'm not sure how many people need an emergency airlift for a simple checkup. Hmm, something smells off, though that might just be the Calibine. Ride or die. Oh. Now, I don't usually have favorites, but this next Darwin Award is just, oh, it's just lacking so many brain cells, it's unbeatable in my opinion. Back in 2015, a gentleman and his friend were visiting Cedar Point Amusement Park in Sandusky, Ohio. They decided to get their adrenaline fix on the Raptor, a steel inverted roller coaster which whips riders around at a top speed of 57 miles per hour. As they were riding, our man in question realized his phone had fallen out of his pocket. Once the ride was over, he peered over into the restricted section and saw his phone lying near the coaster's tracks. Completely ignoring the big do not enter signs, the fences constructed to keep people out, and the fact he knew the ride was currently in operation, having literally just been on it, our man hopped the fence and reached for his phone. To literally no one's surprise, he didn't even bother to check if another cart was coming, and so, as you probably guessed, he was struck by an oncoming cart. Yep, that's got to your Darwin Award if ever there was one. Do you ever wonder if humanity will reach a point where we all become collectively enlightened? Like, we'll all just stop doing, what are you doing? obviously dumb stuff one day and live out each of our lives as happy and healthy individuals? Well, today is not that day, nor is that day coming anytime soon, because we're on part 16 of this series. For anyone new here, we're looking at people who have removed themselves from the gene pool in ways that are so idiotic they prove that Darwin was right. So get your popcorn ready as we take a look at even more embarrassingly dumb ways people died. Get your hot Cheetos ready, boys. Big bad Big boom. Bada boom. Big bada boom. Okay, before we dive into this first one, I just need to check real quick. Uh, nope, I'm not going insane. So here's a quick question. If you found some old unstable explosives on a piece of land near your home, what would you do? A, call the authorities and alert them to the situation. Light it on fire. B, pick them up, cart them around, and attempt to bury them. I'll give you a few I'm seconds not gonna to bury contemplate. Them. What would I bury them for? Are we done? Cool. So the answer is obviously A, right? No one in their right mind would try to handle them, let alone bury them, unless they knew what they were doing, right? Right? Okay, good. I'm not Wrong. Doing Why did I ask? Oh, because back in 2004, a gentleman in Chiavenna, Italy, did just that. He discovered some old sticks of dynamite in an abandoned shack on some land near his vineyard. He'd had some experience of working with explosives before, so decided instead of calling the authorities, he could handle the situation himself. Unfortunately for him, this dynamite had been sitting around for a long time and was sweating nitroglycerin, Ooh. a highly unstable liquid component of this type of highly explosive. Unstable Unaware liquid of how component. volatile these explosives now Very were, volatile. our man set about attempting to bury them. He dug a 30-foot hole, carefully placed the dynamite in it, and then gently filled it in. However, when he tried to flatten the earth mound he'd created by patting it down, the compression triggered the dynamite. The explosion was so huge that it rocked the town of Kiovena, and police rushed to investigate. They found our man torn to shreds, and he remained alive just long enough to tell them the story, before receiving his Darwin Award. Oh! Get rich quick. Ooh, when your princess. doctor tells you to do something, whether it be to get more exercise, cut down on the coffee, or to stop throwing apples at them to try and keep them away, you should do it for the sake of your health. But if they start offering you financial advice, I'd seek a second opinion. Otherwise, you might end up like this next award winner. 
Back in 2014, our man arrived in Zambia from Malawi. Having very little money, he consulted a witch doctor asking him for advice on how to become rich. Now, most medically accredited doctors don't specialize in dispensing financial advice, but this one did. Was it to open a high interest savings account? Maybe study hard and get a good job? Nope, he suggested our man sacrifice parts of his own body. Oh! Hmm. That's not an option I've seen any big banks offering recently. Don't sacrifice why. parts of your own well, body. Well, putting his faith in the witch doctor, our award winner decided to travel out into the Zambian bush, oh. get butt naked, and then let nature take its course. Yep, so and by that course. I mean wandering around for a few hours until a hungry hyena attacked him, yep. biting off three of his toes along with his manhood. Oh! Somehow our man survived, though his ability to procreate has been lost to the belly of the hyena earning him a Darwin Award nonetheless. Shame it doesn't have any monetary value, though. Oh. Got the hump. Hey, no, there's never a special have circle of hell camel. for people who hurt animals, in my opinion, but there's another circle for those who pick on the wrong animal and lose where they're mocked for all eternity. And that's the internet. Back in February 2023, the Brioshka Recreation Center in Omsk, Siberia had a surprise guest for a children's event being held there a Bactrian camel. That's the kind with two humps. The camel, however, was not as excited to be there. Its handler tried to drag it towards the event through a patch of snow outside the center, but the camel was having none of it. Uh. Getting increasingly frustrated, the handler resorted to violence, repeatedly striking the animal in the head. Now, I don't know if oh. any of you have ever seen an adult Bactrian camel, but these things are huge. They're six foot tall at the shoulder and weigh in around a thousand pounds. Oh! And while they look pretty chill, they can become unstoppably aggressive. So picking a fight with one is not a smart move, as this guy quickly discovered. After landing the second blow, the camel suddenly responded by biting, mauling, trampling, and flinging the handler around like a ragdoll, as he was obviously no match for the massive beast. After the handler stopped moving, the camel went back to being a typical chill camel, as if nothing had happened. Needless to say, after being pummeled by a beast more than seven times his size, the handler didn't make it. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the lesson here is treat your animals as you want to be treated. Yep. Especially animals much bigger than you yep. that are prone to violence. Yep, very prone to violence, baby. How not to prank 101. Oh boy. YouTube's extreme prank community hasn't had the best rep in recent years. From creeps ignoring the all-important rule of consent to cases of child cruelty, it's pretty hard to upload an extreme prank that's entertaining, doesn't cross the line, and isn't faked for views. Yeah! But the idea of staging an extreme prank isn't something that one YouTuber from Tennessee even considered back in 2021, which led to his super dumb demise. Yep. He and his friend decided to prank a group of people late one night by running at them in a parking lot, wielding a butcher knife and pretending to rob them. Get shot, and someone bitch. else nearby recording the incident. That doesn't sound like a prank. That sounds like attempted assault. Now here's the thing. The group they were targeting didn't know that this was a prank. I'm guessing so their fear came across as authentic on camera. Very authentic. But Tennessee is quite famously shot an open carry asses. state, meaning citizens are allowed to carry firearms. Specifically, handguns on their persons for self-defense purposes, which one of them was. So when the YouTuber brandished a big old knife at the group and declared his intent to rob them, the armed group member immediately took him out. Yeah, it's not clear how he thought this was going to end. Stupid! Maybe he just really wanted to be a part of my Darwin Award series. At least now his prank has made it big on YouTube. He went viral after all! Yes, stupid Hello, mother. Darkness, my old friend. Oh. Darkness is crime's best friend, allowing oh, people to commit unspeakable acts is without Batman? ever being seen, including by the idiots committing said crime, it turns out. Back in 2000, a couple of would be criminals decided to target a gentleman who lived on a caravan park in Brisbane, Australia. It was late at night and very dark, so the pair thought they'd have the advantage. The guy would never see them coming. They each pulled out a knife and stormed the caravan, which was pitch black inside. A huge scuffle occurred between the three men, but when the would-be victim managed to turn the light on, he couldn't believe his eyes. He was uninjured, his two assailants, however, unable to see, had impaled each other. One only just survived, but the other never made it to the hospital. I guess that's the last time either of them will be taking a stab in the dark.
<laughs> she said, taking a stab in the dark. <laughs> fast food fake. You know, considering how many of us indulge in fast food every day, the people flipping your burgers and making your pizzas really don't make enough money. But in a bid to make more cash, one pair of fast food managers ended up getting way more than they bargained for. This was back in the year 2000, when the night and day managers of a Burger King in Indianapolis came up with a plan to stage a robbery of the store they worked for. The day manager would steal $4,000 in cash from the day's takings before tying up the night manager in the walk-in freezer and setting a small fire in a wastebasket, making it look like the robbers had also tried to burn the place down. The fire alarm would go off and when the fire brigade arrived, the night manager would tell them it was a robbery and no one would think the pair of them had taken the money. This How's might have been a plan that worked if the day manager hadn't messed up. She gonna freeze. They set the wastebasket on fire, but it was barely a smolder, which didn't set off any of the fire alarms. It wasn't until the morning crew came in and the rush of air from the open door sparked the smoldering embers to burst into flames that the firefighters were called. And only then did they find the manager in the freezer suffering from extreme hypothermia. As you can guess, she didn't make it to the hospital. But after realizing that the night manager's bindings were loose enough for her to have gotten free and that she could have escaped from the unlocked freezer, they began to suspect foul play. What? It wasn't long before they approached the day manager, who not only still had the cash on them, but had incriminatingly stashed it in a Burger King bag. Motherfucker! Man, if you're going to be dumb enough to try a plan like this, at least be smart enough not to get caught. <laughs> Cycle blame. Okay, cyclists of the world, listen up. Most drivers hate us. That's no secret. We're much slower than them. Some of us take up way too much space on the road, and some even run red lights and ignore signs thinking they don't apply to us. If we want to improve our reputation, we need to do better. Starting with paying attention. Otherwise, you might end up like this next award winner. Back in 1997, a cyclist in Sorocaba, Brazil, put his Walkman headphones on and set off on his bicycle. Yeah. He was happily listening to his tunes, making his way through yeah, the city, and he decided to take a shortcut to his destination. Mm. Absorbed in his music, he pedaled on, blissfully unaware of his surroundings, when, all of a sudden, he was knocked off his bike by an oncoming plane. What? Yeah, the shortcut this guy had decided to take led across Sorocaba Airport's landing strip, and with his music blaring, he hadn't heard the twin prop plane approaching the runway to land. He crossed its path at exactly the wrong time, and... Needless to say, he didn't survive. Oh well, my there's God. at least one important lesson for all cyclists here. Not everything is a cycle lane. Oh. Up in flames. Here's a question. What do you use gasoline for? I bet most of you just said, it's fuel, duh. But did you know as a petroleum-based product, it's also pretty good at dissolving oils, making it a decent degreaser. The only obvious issue is that it's also highly flammable which is why it's not advised to use it as your go-to degreaser. But that hasn't stopped some idiots. Back in 1998, a woman in Texas was cleaning the tennis shoes she was wearing with gasoline to give them that bright white finish. If she'd used an ounce of caution, this would have been absolutely fine. Except she was doing it right next to a candle she had recently lit, which she accidentally knocked over. All of a sudden, the flame ignited the spills of gasoline, leading to her shoes. Fire challenge! With her feet on fire, she panicked and yeah! ran to her neighbor's house, who rushed for her water hose. But as she did, the polyester dress the woman was wearing, a notoriously flammable material, also caught fire from the flame of the shoes. The neighbor eventually put her out, but not before our idiot joined the many Darwin Award winners before her. Braving the Barricade Road signs and barricades are the bane of any car owner. One minute you're driving along, the next you need to turn around because the road ahead is closed. Grr, it's infuriating. Now I, being a law-abiding citizen, just take the L and try to find a detour, like 99% of normal people. However, there's that 1% of drivers that think, surely whatever they've closed oh. the road for doesn't apply to me, right? I'm special. Nothing bad will happen to me if I just keep on driving. Well, that's exactly what this next guy was thinking. Back in March 2018, New Jersey was in chaos. A recent storm had downed trees and power lines all over the place, so there was traffic snarling the roads and tailbacks everywhere you looked. Barricades were put up left, right, and center. However, one man who'd been asked by his father to come and shovel his driveway decided 
these barricades simply did not apply to him. He steered around a set of bright orange traffic cones that clearly blocked the road ahead of him and continued on his way. Yep, right that was until a downed electrical wire in the middle of the road, which was live and still buzzing with thousands of volts of electricity, struck the car, zapping the driver, and setting the entire thing on fire. Oh my god. Oh man, if only there'd been something to warn him of the danger ahead. Ah! I don't know, like a ah! set of bright orange cones purposely blocking the road? <sighs> Be smart. Boobies. You know what you should never fuck with? Bees. They sting, they swarm, and... The only type of good bees are boobies. Just had to say that. And they suck. Period. So if you do have to fuck with them, you better know what you're doing. Or you could end up like this next award winner. Back in 2002, a farmer from Sao Paulo, Brazil, was tasked with removing a beehive from one of his orange trees. He could have hired a professional to take care of it, but he figured the easiest and cheapest way to be rid of them would be to burn the hive himself. No. So he put on his gloves, long pants, and no. long sleeved garments before sealing everything together with tape so that bees wouldn't crawl into his clothes. No, you're not then he put a plastic head. bag on his head and sealed it tightly plastic around bag. his neck so the bees wouldn't sting his face. Mother. And finally, he grabbed a torch and went off to burn some bees. A few hours later, though, he hadn't returned. Worried, his wife went out to look for him, and she found him. Dead. But it wasn't from the bees. In fact, their hive was untouched. It turned out that the bag strapped to his head was efficient at keeping out the bees, the smoke, oh, and the oxygen he needed to breathe. Yep, this idiot hadn't put any air holes in the bag, and with his gloves taped down, his fumbling fingers weren't able to get any purchase to rip the bag off. Well, I think we all know the moral of this story. Yeah, don't fuck with bees. Buzzkill. If you legally own a gun, there's a good chance you've gone down to a firing range to practice your aim, where you can shoot a bunch of sensible, non-life-threatening targets. You know, like paper targets, steel plates, balloons, live electrical utility poles. Wait, hang on. That last one isn't found on any shooting range I've ever been to. And with a very good reason, as one Pennsylvanian man discovered back in 2002. He and a few of his friends were practicing their marksmanship in a farm field by shooting at, you guessed it, a live electrical utility pole. Oh boy! Specifically, they were aiming at the glass electrical insulators lining the poles and keeping the wire suspended. Now, the good news is their aim was sharp enough to hit at least six of these insulators. The bad news was that as they hit the last insulator holding the live electrical wire in place, it fell down. Suddenly, our man became aware that the sun-scorched farmland they were on could catch fire, and so panicked, he grabbed the wire with his hands. Oh! Big mistake. Thousands of volts of electricity surged through his body, instantly ending him and fast-tracking his application into the coveted Darwin Award Hall of Fame. Aww. Chivalry is dead. Yep, and women Have you ever it. done something stupid to try and impress someone you like? Dumb. Maybe you bought them a super expensive gift or no. tried writing them a poem. No. Or worse, singing them a song. Nope. Yeah, I can hear the collective sigh of regret emanating from uh -oh. around the world. These approaches may sound cringy, but they're nothing compared to what these next two award winners did. Back in 2004, two Taiwanese college students met up one evening, and after they'd had a little to drink, they both revealed they liked the same girl on campus. It was at this point things got heated and so they decided to have a contest to see who between them would get the rights to pursue the girl. Neither one of and them! how did they settle this? A nice safe game of rock, paper, scissors maybe? <laughs> nope. Seeing as this was a matter of honor and dignity, they decided to joust. But instead of horses, they'd use their scooters. The rules were that they'd ride at each other full speed and the first one to turn away would lose the contest. So, without helmets or any kind of safety equipment, the two rode straight at each other, topping out at 50 miles per hour, and crashed. Neither had the smarts to turn away, which cost both of them their lives. Ironically, they could have saved both their lives if they'd just talked to the girl. As it turned out, she hadn't been interested in either of them. Yeah, And that they... just makes this pair of Darwin Awards all the shinier. Yeah, because they liked her. <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares is there anything worse than losing the keys to your home? Ugh, it's so annoying. If you're lucky, you might remember that you forgot to lock a window and be able to clamber in that way. 
but it's usually better to just wait for a locksmith to let you in. Otherwise, your impatience could have some real consequences, like what happened to this next Darwin Award winner. Back in 2004 in Wolfsburg, Austria, an incredibly inebriated gentleman returned home late one evening, only to discover he couldn't find his keys. No matter, he thought, because he could slip in through the kitchen window. The window itself was fixed at the base and tilted out, giving him just enough room to squeeze his head and part of his torso through. And that's when he got stuck. With both his legs off the ground and being a little drunk, he couldn't coordinate himself enough to push through. And then there was another complication. As he'd been struggling to get in, he'd accidentally turned on the tap below him, filling the kitchen sink with water. The more he struggled, the more he exhausted himself until he apparently fell asleep, still stuck in the window. From here, his head slipped into the water, and being as drunk as he was, he didn't wake up, and he drowned. He was discovered the next day, and to really make this a top-tier Darwin Award winner, as they were removing the body, the police found his keys in his pocket. Wow! And if he'd survived this ordeal, I'm pretty sure he would have died of embarrassment. That's bad. A bridge too far. It takes some serious kahunas to ride a motorbike. The speeds, the other road users, the lack of airbags, it's a risky way to travel. But even more so when you're a grade A idiot like this next guy was. Back in 2008, a Floridian gentleman dressed in swim trunks and sneakers was riding along when he noticed the Minnesota Key drawbridge ahead of him was beginning to open. And a sensible rider worth their salt would have slowed down and simply waited for the drawbridge to level again before crossing it. But not this guy. No, instead, clearly thinking he was in a Fast and Furious movie, decided to try his luck and jump the gap. So he increased his speed and shot forward. Unfortunately for him, drawbridge designers anticipate idiots just like this and so build in safety measures to most drawbridges in the form of crossing guards. The guards dropped down before a man had a chance to hit the brakes, clotheslining him off his bike at breakneck speeds and careening him over the side of the bridge. He hit the water, but the impact instantly wiped him out of the gene pool. Ironically, the bike carried on and apparently made it over to the other side. How oddly satisfying. Firework fail. Not your anus. There are a lot of things you shouldn't do with a firework. You shouldn't hold it while lighting the fuse. You shouldn't plant it somewhere dangerous. You shouldn't aim it at people. A lot of pretty obvious don'ts there. But you know which one I didn't think needed saying? Don't put it in your butt. And yet here we are in Sunderland, UK, a place I can only assume is the Florida of England back in 2006. It's November 8th, a few days after England's famous Guy Fox night, where bonfires and fireworks are lit to celebrate the day Mr. Fox didn't blow up the Houses of Parliament. With a leftover firework, our award winner decided he would let this one off in style. By lighting the fuse, lying down on the ground, and planting the firework, er, uh, twixt his cheeks. There's no way. There's every chance he could have just come away from this with a few burns to his backside if he'd planted it so that it shot directly up into the sky. However, the idiot had put the firework in his rear the wrong way round. What type of nasty so instead shit? of shooting up into the sky, it exploded on his scrotum. You dirty the incident uh, compromised his junk and his ability to procreate, thus removing any more of his idiot antics from the gene pool. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say Sunderland was challenging Florida for the title of most chaotic place in the world. Some like it hot. There's something about the superhuman abilities on display during competitive endurance sports that you can look away from. You want to watch a man run 200 miles in 48 hours? Of course you do. You want to see someone cycle 400 miles in less than a day? Absolutely! You want to watch someone step into a superheated hotbox and stay in there for as long as possible? Hang on, what? That last one is real? And it's called the World Sauna Championship? Yeah. Founded in 1999, the World Sauna Championship was an endurance competition held in Finland. Each year, many eager sauna-loving competitors would enter the hot box, which was an infernal 230 degrees Fahrenheit, Damn. hotter than the boiling point of water and hot enough to cause third-degree burns. Water was poured on the coals inside the sauna every 30 seconds and competitors would attempt to outlast every other person in there with their efforts only counting if they could walk out of the box unaided. 
Not only was this an actual official event, competitors had to sign a legal agreement promising not to sue the event organizers if they got injured. Although that wouldn't make a difference to one of the men who competed back in 2010. After spending six minutes in the hellish hot box and outlasting every other competitor in there, the final two remaining competitors passed out and had to be dragged from the box. Both were covered in third degree burns and blisters and were suffering from convulsions. One was transferred to the hospital where they revealed 70% of his skin was burned, his respiratory system was scorched and his kidneys failed. He was put into a medically induced coma for six weeks before miraculously pulling through. The other guy wasn't so lucky. He passed mere minutes after being dragged from the box. And to really add the shine to this award, both competitors were disqualified. Well, hey, if you enter life-threateningly stupid competitions, I guess you win life-threateningly stupid prizes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. It's your boy Blast from Sage D Twisms.